Okay, and we should be live. And I'm now running Corthos. Oh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the Shrimp Stream. I'm your host, Shrimp Tom. Today, we are doing a 1 to 30. Why? I don't know why, but that's what we're doing. Oh. I am, like, not ready. I'm, like, out of breath. Yeah, I'm here. Um, but, yes, we are apparently running a 1 to 30 today, which would be a very, very exciting and busy, busy deal. So, hopefully, I didn't set up the timer. No. Uh, we'll see. It's technically 3 to 30. Let me see if I can get the timer. I'll have to adjust this, maybe. So, we'll see. Also, good morning, z -Lock. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everybody. Woo! Uh, what is going on? Hope you're doing super well this morning. Man, that still takes a long time to kill that guy. What this one? No, that's fast. Um, but yeah, good morning, everybody. Hope you're all doing super duper well. I am your host, Shrimp Tom. Today, we are going fast. Why are we going fast? Because I can do this? There we go. A timer. Perfect. It should already display somewhere on the screen. So we should be good there. Good morning, um, oh stream. Hey, good morning, sir. How are you doing? How are you feeling? <sighs> I had planned to find out how you're doing, especially considering a combination of you're still recovering and Elden Ring is out. So I wanted to find out how you're going. But, um... Man, every day has been like a 16-hour day, and I've been really tired, so I should reach out sooner. But I'm glad to hear that you're doing well. Feeling like yourself. Oh, so you're out there climbing mountains, conquering the world? I don't know why I'm, like, really out of breath. I think it's because I woke up and I'm in a rush. Ooh. Ooh, nice. Um, I'm, like, wheezing. I'm going to take my inhaler. I don't know what it is. I'm just because of, like... Waking up stress or something, but yeah. Oh, I just need to like breathe. Happy that you can take the jump scares of Elden Ring. There are not that many jump scares in Elden Ring. Um, at least not things that I would classify as jump scares. There's mostly just, you know, there are some areas of the game I have learned that you can always expect. Um, there to be a monster behind you. So there's some areas that you can basically expect a monster to be behind you every time. Uh, but it's a good game. I've played, put in 40 hours so far. I really enjoy Elden Ring. I think that they did a great job with um, trying to minimize the impact of open world. I mentioned this before. I really don't like open world games. I, I, I don't see the value in them. I don't think they're very good. But they did a lot to get rid of some of the feeling or the negative feelings they have towards open world video games. Which is good for me. Oh, the jump button is surprisingly impactful. Yo, what's up, Will? How are you doing? There's you use your summons. So the other problem too is they don't give you a good the the indication of where you can or can't use your summons is like almost not there. Anyway, um, so to give everybody a bit of context, is that um, the monk in our party, Daisuke, it's his last past life before racial completionist. And I promised that I would run with them to uh, cause to go through, because I thought it would be kind of fun. And then I realized, wait a minute, why don't I reincarnate my main character, Stream Stream, so I can get a redo of first life bonus, so I can get an extra million Reaper XP, so I can maybe push over 100, which I thought would be kind of fun. And then, um, there's a 25% XP boost going on right now, because uh, through the end of the day. So I was like, let's just do it in a day. So we're doing 1 to 30 today, so we'll see how it goes. So I'm hoping we'll be good. That's why I've got this timer here. But we will see. The timer's on screen, right? I didn't actually check. Yeah, it is. But yeah, when it comes to um, 
Get out of here. Oh man, I, I just barely don't do enough damage. Um, when it comes to Elden Ring, I'm having a fantastic time. I think you will too. I will say that, you know, the um, Elder Scrolls franchise is a video game franchise that I really like. But, uh, or sorry, it's a, it's a, it's a good franchise. I, I, I appreciate it. I enjoy it. But I think that um, Elden Ring has just done a phenomenal job um, so far of still being a very entertaining game with very hard boss fights. Just be ready. It's a hard game, dude. Just be ready for a hard game. Also, what's up, Doc Holiday? How you doing? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Also, I posted a YouTube video this morning, so if you missed it, it's there. Um, it's uh, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good video. It's the Elder Scrolls franchise, dude. I don't know what I'm saying right now. I haven't had any coffee, and I've just been rushing to get everything done this morning. Uh, I was up super late uh, editing the video for this morning to put everything together, and yeah, so I'm I'm just glad it's uh, it's done. But uh, Dark Souls. Dark Souls and Elder Scrolls sound similar in my brain. You don't like the Elder Souls franchise? What about the Dark Scrolls franchise? Hmm, Dark Scrolls. I don't want to use my Elder Blast. I just want to talk to this guy. Hero. It is on the people's lips as you walk by. This was one, but I'm glad the difficulty is still there. It's not as hard. I would. Okay, sounds good. Just then, have fun with the uh, second, the first and second major boss. If they're telling you it's not hard, just have fun with those bosses. You know, have fun with them. Yeah, you know, the second major boss of the video game took me probably two and a half hours to beat, if not longer. Oh, I, I haven't experienced any game-breaking bugs so far yet, so I'm pretty good. I mean, the edge of your seat? Yes, that one was rough. The second main boss, Godric? Yeah, Godric. Godric took me a very long time. That was a very fun boss fight. Your stalwart defense gives the Sahagin pause, but you hear more of them gathering out... The one before the intro? Oh, you beat that thing? Oh, man, I, I did not beat that. No, I actually had. I know I have beat it. I have. I I have beat that monster. But yeah. Well, then you might be a better a better Soulsborne player than me, and maybe you won't have trouble. But yeah, um, this game has been hard. I will say that it's also not totally even in difficulty, um, because of the open world aspect. Unlike a regular Soulsborne game, where you can only go like one direction, so you kind of get funneled into having certain items and certain things, unless you go like really out of the way. Um, this game, you definitely notice your character is stronger if you kind of just follow along. Like, you, you kind of, or not following, like if you just go everywhere except for where you're supposed to go. You'll get the cutscene and have to jump off. I guess you're not supposed to kill it. It killed me. Although, to be far, fair, and also I think this is coloring some of my experience, I started as the naked guy on the beach. Um, so since I was playing as the naked guy, it kind of meant that, oh man, I don't even do anything because my attacks don't land. Uh, warlock. I had no choice. I was like, hey guys, do you think I should play as the samurai? Do you think I should play as the knight? And they're like, naked guy, naked guy with a club, naked guy with a club. It was sweet. So I did that. I am naked guy with a club. Uh, Dark Scrolls. It should be called Dark Scrolls in DDO. Ooh. Your victories have to hopefully some duels. Safer, okay. But only temporarily. I'll fight you. Oh, that's a major problem. Yeah, does weapon swapping fix it? Like taking off the two-handed and putting it back on? Oh, are we doing keep? I feel like there's some build conjecture. Build conjecture? Conjecture for build. But look forward to so yeah, when it comes to duels, my character also kind of sucks. Because I went specifically with one character that I thought was kind of cool. Um, there is the... I found this weapon. 
really early on that looks like uh, they're like these phase blades that go through armor. So when guys shield block you, you can just hit them anyway. And I hate when guys shield block you in Dark Souls video games. It's a very, very irritating part of the video game. And so I was like, oh, perfect. A weapon that lets me ignore this entire mechanic. I love that. Oh, it was a good time. Sounds good. Later, boss. Enjoy your lunch and enjoy the rest of your entire day. And let me know how your Dark... Your... Not Dark Souls. Your Elden Ring journey is going. We're going to be back to streaming some more Elden Ring later this week. Um, I am going to finish that game. I have not even touched it. Yesterday I was super busy. Uh, turns out that if you just stream for 48 hours in three days, that it really doesn't allow me to get all the other responsibilities I have to do done during the day. So I had to kind of shove everything into Sunday, which was good. Fast, fast, fast. Go, go, go. So, my character doesn't really have a lot of, like, good AoE damage. So, my plan is to grab all of this and pull it into one area. And then just kind of, like so. Oh, whatever. I'm just going to ignore this for now. Because I can. Ha, ha, ha. I like how there's like a cloud of bats around me and I was only able to manage to hit like half of them. I love that. Must do puzzle. We're good. Where do you get an Elden Ring? 25%, 50%? I'm not sure. I have two pieces of the Elden Ring out of six. So I just assume that I'm not that far in, into the game. Because two out of six does not sound that far. This should be enough um, I don't think it's 33%. I have a feeling that fairly soon I'll be able to just kind of like boss rush. Like do main area into main area and then into main area. So in terms of the world completion, I'm probably close to like 40%. Maybe closer to 50%. I got a riding chapeau with charisma one. Dang. I was kind of hoping for a mythic reaper one, but we'll see. Are the also the earlier boys? We're gonna try to do one to thirty in a sitting, and one to thirty is a complicated, a complicated uh, thing because it's got a lot of time involved in it. So hopefully we'll be able to do it, but we'll see. Drink Sovereign 2 pot? Um, I'm supposed to be. I forgot. That's okay. What XP are you guys at? Like 50 even? Yeah. Okay, I'm good. I forgot to turn on my Sovereign Pot. I for okay, I'm good. I forgot to turn on my Potion. Uh, yes, we're going to be running 50s. The idea of doing this without 50s... Uh, 53. The idea of doing this without, without 50s is too much. Uh, that would be too much too much uh, time. So there, it might be possible, but not for this group, at least. If you have six people and you're really heavily dividing quests, then maybe you're gonna see how we divide quests up later. There's not a lot of quest division that can take place here, um, and especially since we're lower level, no one really has a lot of good powers. I'm gonna be going into um, not using lightning spirit at all, so I can unset this. Uh, I'm gonna be going into falconry and grabbing the sprint boost. I'm also gonna be grabbing cone, but I'm not gonna be grabbing sprint boost until after I have cone. So it's gonna be it's gonna take some time to kind of get to where are some of the damage numbers that I really want. Yes, we're going to use a Shadow Crypt opener. 100%. Dead Auto's box in there and you're good? True. Yeah, if we just if we just rip an Auto's box, then maybe. Congrats. The large rusty lock on this chest also, one of our players just got a Reaper point. We're running these on Reaper, which should be fine. 
I have 125 hit points with no items on. And this is why um, reincarnations and past lives are insanity. Blank is my racial completionist. This is my racial completionist character. Um, it's kind of silly how my stats go without any items equipped. I just I just have 30 charisma. Because I get 8 from feats and past lives. Or past lives and tomes. It's going to go up even higher. Even higher. I could open with that coupon. Yeah. Well, I think that's what a lot of people did. And that's definitely something I, I recommend that you do. Well, she's dead. Roused by the alarm. The lever clicks into place. That's why I was for why some players struggle on hardcore. True. Yeah, I think people hit hardcore league. And we've talked about this before, but they hit hardcore league and they forget how the game works. Like just they just one hundred percent completely forget how the game works. And they're like, Oh yeah, I'm good. And then they get blown up by like pretty much every trap. It's one of the things that's nice about playing all these like first life characters all the time. Especially on Hardcore League and for testing out builds and what have you. It's, it kind of keeps my brain grounded. And it's one of the reasons why I actually wanted to fully reincarnate my character. Yeah, I do have Completionist again on my main character. but Or on, on the character named Shrim Tom. But even though I have like Completionist, still it is... It's, I had to get there. And getting there, you still get that, that feeling of like you don't have stuff. You don't have Reaper points. You don't have all these other things. You're just presenting Completionist? Yes. Monk is quick. Quick like the bunny, especially if you get haste or a sprint boost. Ooh, it's good. I think so. Arcane Skeleton Court, there's a Kobold Shaman. Yes. Um, I don't even think it's like um, past lives. I think those, that, to me, actually is more about like lack of preparation. Day one, those things get a lot of kills, especially because nobody has any of their guild chips leveled up. So guild chips actually give you like flat resistances to stuff. You know, like you get like 10 elemental resist. Um, and you don't get that on hardcore because you just you just don't have it yet. That's just how it is. You just you haven't unlocked it. Um and so people go in day one with no ship buffs, for, so they don't have 20 hit points. Um, they don't have, yeah, so no ship buffs, no 20 hit points, anything else like that. Rough plate is bad. Um, you know, they, they just don't, uh, they don't have the resistances, they don't have the bonus, like the bonus skills, even the plus two constitution. Like, all this stuff adds up, even like the... Um, Yeah, it's good. It's just, a, it, it's a scenario where if you're not prepared, you forget how many little minor conveniences you get. Oh. Hey, which quest did we just go to? Null Cave? Oh, we're not doing the Hobgoblin? Okay. True, yeah. You can't just buy all your resist potions. You can... Sort of. If you're doing like a 5k, you can easily afford the, afford the potions. Because um, on 5k favor, you're running way too many quests. Prisma, I might be able to just do all the things. Where's my bluff lower? Oh, I don't have a bluff tome on this character? That's hilarious. This tablet belongs to a knoll named Boomfoot. Boomfoot reveals that Zart Soot Club, the Diplomacy succeed. Intimidate, fail. I roll a one. Bluff, succeed. I failed on my intimidate. You convinced members of the tribe to turn against nope, we're good. the cult of evil chaos and found proof that Chief Bloodgleam has... Is there, are we doing a speedrun to 30 for any for fun or any specific reason? Yes, we're doing it for the specific reason of... Sorry, I was communicating about the part about the quest. Um, this member of the party, Daisuke, is uh, on his last life before Racial Completionist. So we're running a 1 to 30 to get him as Racial Completionist. The 
outlanders seem to reconsider. Not raid at greatsword for epic leveling. Um, no. There are hard to farm greatswords for epic leveling, and there are raid greatswords for epic leveling, but there are no easy, not raid greatswords for epic leveling. Well, that's not true. The easiest one would be, like, just to keep on the Borderlands ones, because the Borderlands ones are pretty good. Um, but yeah, outside of that, no, there's, there's nothing else that's really special. That they can finally leave the borderlands behind. At the start? Then they took the oh, we just picked up the... Okay, I got it. Oro, who laughs with yeah. Because you can get the... Um... It initially seemed. We might have break... broke this quest by not talking to the men PC at the start. <laughs> hmm. Well, we broke a quest. Alright. Apparently we broke a quest by not talking to one of the NPCs at the start, because if you just pick up the um the Charm of Evil Chaos, it you can do everything without actually talking to her. So that's cool. I've never had this bug before. I don't really run a lot of Borderlands. I run Borderlands mostly in Epics. So this is weird to me, but I guess we're redoing this one. Anyway, um but yeah, so in terms of non or like special great swords, you have like the raid great sword. Um, you know, Sword of Shadows, obviously. And then you have Whirlwind out of the desert, which is really good. Um, but that one is not easy to farm. I guess technically it's kind of easy to farm now because the Epic Whirlwind is very easy to get if you happen to have, um, what? Um, if you happen to have, um, why is my brain not working? Uh, the extra bronze tokens, so you can just trade them in the sands. Oh, they're all done. Chief Bloodgleam has been lying to the Outlanders about sending their comrades to join the cult. If you can prove that Outlanders are being killed as sacrifices instead, it will destroy their loyalty. The yeah, that's not that's not bad. The vermin lets out a mangled shriek. As you knock there you go. Join the Outlanders in the Uprising. I think we did. Um, trying to think. Yeah, Epic Whirlwind is probably pretty good. Or not probably. It, it's it's quite good. Um, you can buy it with the 600... I forgot that you can buy it with 625 Desert Tokens. And then also you can upgrade it for only 50 Sand or whatever the Desert Sand Crystals. Which are very easy to get in Epics. And then you have a fairly good weapon. I think that's it. Yes. Today is the last day to transfer stuff off of Hardcore. Make sure you transfer stuff off of Hardcore. Something that will convince them. You will hold up Grave Maw's bloody ring and reveal that you found it in the chief. Ah, thank you, Perry. Yeah, I don't usually. So Tom is like the end of the name. The way the way I kind of think about it is like it's like Jonathan. You don't go up to somebody and you go like, "Oh, what's up, Than?" You'd say John. So it's the same same concept. Anyway, back at it. Um, would a Bladeforge Warlock be fine? Uh, I mean, yeah, Warlock is really strong, so you can't really go wrong with Bladeforge Warlock. Uh, is there any particular reason why you want to do a Bladeforge Warlock? Like, Bladeforge is just good, and then Bladeforge Warlock allows you to heal yourself by casting spells, as opposed to healing yourself by using, like, consumables, which is usually what you do. Although, post-20, every Warlock is going to be using some type of healing. Either you're going to be getting, um, Renewal, pri the Primal Avatar Heal Cocoon, or, um... Or the other one, um, uh, cure, moder cure moderate mass. So in general, you usually are going to fix your healing problem when you get there, and then in heroics, you've got, like, consumables that you can use, which are good enough sometimes. So yeah. Still mad that Epic Legendary World doesn't keep the dex hit and damage? Me too. Where do you trade those sands tokens? Um, so there's a guy inside of the desert called Nakembi, I think, in... Uh, Zwabi's Refuge, who takes them. It's the same guy who takes the desert tokens, so that it's always taken it. He's got like, it's like McKenby's trade outpost inside. He's next to the guy that gives the quest offering for blood. There's just a, there's just a building there. These guys heal too much. I can't damage them because I don't hit with my blasts. I need cone. Hey, good morning, fairy. How are you doing? 
But yeah, somebody who loves playing Warlock. And I even just posted a Warlock build this morning, which if you miss it, you can go check it out there on YouTube. Um, I love me some Warlock. Warlock's good. Um, but it is something that really works with any race, so you don't have to worry about playing it as a particular character race to make your Warlock powerful or useful. Um, so you're going to have a good time. So you definitely can do that. Depending on what you want to do, though, it isn't also entirely necessary to go pure Warlock. The main reason is if you're not like doing really any raiding, you could just keep the two levels of blade for or two levels of paladin on it and be like get plus eight to all your saves. Plus lay on hands with a very high charisma is extremely useful for warlock. Because as a paladin or as a as a warforged, uh, there's like a weird bug where you actually get healed double. I don't know why this is the case, but there's basically a bug where if you're Warforged, you get healed the healing amount, and then that same amount gets hit on you again as repair, but it's affected by both your healing amp and your repair amp. So basically, imagine you have a character that is playing Warforged with 100 healing amplification and 100 repair amplification, and you heal 20 on your Lay on Hands. The way it works is that you heal 20 from the... Um, the healing or the healing it comes in but it gets amplified by your healing amplification so it goes up to 40. then you get the repair quantity and the repair repair quantity uses the total that you had like the additive total so it says oh okay i got 40 healing so then it starts with 40 and it doubles that up and then it would give you 80 repair amp from your or repair from your 100 repair amplification so 20 lay on hands on a regular human can multiply very quickly on a Warforged or Bladeforged, which is why it's so nice to have on a Warforged or Bladeforged. I don't know exactly why it does that, but that's why it does. WF hacking. Nerf. Nerf. Please, Tobin. Please, Tobin. Fix. Re. And so even with just a few Leon Hanses, it doesn't seem like it would be that good, but it is actually surprisingly useful. So Warlock, cool class, Bladeforged, cool class. As I mentioned before though, you can play as a pure one. Really the only reason to be a pure Warlock is if you're doing like a whole, whole lot of endgame stuff and you're gonna be staying there for a while. Um, because Warlock levels, surprisingly, aren't the biggest factor on Warlock Eldritch Blast damage. Epic levels are, because in Warlock levels, you only get, like, a few different things that increase your Eldritch Blast damage. But in Epics, you get more of them. I don't know why that is exactly why that's the case, but that's the case. That's how it works. Anything else? Lies? Uh, yeah. It was lies. Elden Ring's on the schedule. I just really wanted to get some... One, I wanted to stream some DDO. Because I think people missing out on DDO is... Um, I think people, you know, they want to see that. So, uh, it's, it's part of my content and what I want to do. And then also, I wanted to be able to help die get there. So, yeah. Yo, what's up, Mr. Dark? How you doing? Heroics too badly, so they wanted to shift some power from Heroics into Epics? No, that, that is what happened. That is 100% what happened. They basically reduced Warlock power by a huge amount for Heroics, and then it ended up making it so Warlock did not do a lot of damage in Epics. And uh, so the adjustment and change is, I think, was a good decision for the early game, but they didn't compensate the, the end game. And so Warlocks just ended up being an extremely low damage class that everyone wrote off. And then they were like, oh, let's just re-add the damage. And to give you an example, you get the same amount. Like, they literally doubled the base damage of the Eldritch Blast and Epics, which is pretty impactful. Ooh, that's exciting. Uh, do I get anything powerful here? I have four points. All right. This the real build? Uh, I uh, yeah, it's a real build. 
I mean, I'm currently playing as a real build. Better direct blast. Oh, dies? No, 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 no. This is the. This is not because he has to reincarnate this to turn into a racial completionist. No, it's all good. It's all good. It's just something that like. Um. I don't know. Just don't really want to go by Tom, if that makes sense. Oh, he's immune to fire. Well, I'm ignoring that. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Well, like I said, when it comes to... When it comes to Warlock and... Oh, yeah, you did. Must do warlock damage. Fight. Okay, yeah, we're good. Uh, isn't the question to consider is how good is the tree's capstones? Not necessarily, because the warlock capstones are all extremely good. Each one are amazing. They're all amazingly good. It's just you don't necessarily need them depending on what you're doing. Right? So Devour the Soul, insanely good ability. PRR MRR reduction on any ability in the game is fantastic. So it's just super duper strong. And then on top of that, you've also got, um, is it, even, is it just better to melee these guys than it is to blast them? Mm, maybe. So you have PRR and MRR destruction, um, both just fantastically good abilities. And it's an instant kill that is a will save, so it works on, like, so many different things. The only thing is it doesn't work on constructs, but everything else is, like, super strong about it. Um... And then you've got, um, I can just recall from here. And then you have the, um, oh, I can't recall on the ladder, right? That makes sense. Recall on the ladder. And then you've got Tainted Scholar, which is 30% spell crit damage, 4 charisma, and the extra depravity. And energy drain's fine, but 30% spell crit damage is amazing. Elder's Blast damage is amazing. And then you have the Capstone of the Enlightened Spirit Tree, which is 10% life plus a bunch of other stats, which makes it extremely strong. So yeah, they're all like really, really good. Warlock trainer. Warlock trainer. Here he is. Dagon Heartsbane. Charisma. Skills. Warlock. Um, blur. Reaper points. I'm going to just try to probably buy everything. Beep. Made it. Got to spend those Reaper points. I guess I'm just staying up here. Doors locked, so I'm stuck out of here. Yo, what's this TR for? This is Dioski's last past life before racial completionist. So we're doing a 1 to 30 in honor of getting him his last racial past life. Do you have the sounding effect works on Warlock or on Blast? Yes, it does. It works on every single attack. Those types of added spell damage is the reason why when Warlock released, everyone wanted the, um, the ring. What was this? Oh, thank you. I needed that. So there's that. Um, the, sorry, the Radiant Ring. What's that ring called? I don't know. The one from um, Keep on the Borderlands. It's called something. Big Blasty Radiant Glory. No. The effect is called Radiant Glory. I just can't remember what the actual item is called. Hmm. Lantern Ring. It's Lantern Ring. Everybody wanted the Lantern Ring for their Warlocks. We're getting there. The damage is the damage is kicking up. It's he it's heating. The pot is cooking. So we're we're getting there. Bright gaze? Yeah, bright gaze works as well. Yeah, lantern ring is haunted halls. Exactly. Yep. When warlock released, people were spamming haunted halls to get the lantern ring for their warlocks. Cause it works on every attack. Same thing with bright gaze, same thing with sounding effects from um. Oh god, the lag. It's noticeable. Okay. Here we go. 
Um, yeah, same with the sounding effect from Defiler the Just. Same with the sounding effect from Here's Some Fiddle. It's all the same. Don't hit. Fuck. I'll be a little late. I gotta clean up these oozes. They're immune to fire. Quest complete. Why are these creatures immune to fire? Ugh. Anyways, Zentune, welcome back to the stream team. Appreciate the support, buddy. How you doing? Welcome back. How you feeling? What's happening? What's good? What's going on? You need a bright case in your melee lock? Yep. I want to switch to fire because you can't because switching to fire requires a reincarnation because a lot of the warlock effects are given with feats. Which quest? I have none. So there's that. Uh, do spell singers slow down between 12 to 20? No, they slow down between 16 and 20. But before 16, you should still be like boosting your way through quests. You know, I got the young Tom Kapoor good yesterday when he tr was trying to farm Headhunter. Wait, how'd you get him while he was trying to farm Headhunter? Also, why is he trying to get a Headhunter? Are you talking about Hunter and the Hunted, the new raid? Is it called HH? Um, do you prefer f Fiend to to Goo? Oh, why do I prefer it? Oh, um, because I get more damage. So as a Warlock, um, I get damage uh, from the Tiefling Tree. I get the critical here, which is good. And then the gearing as well. Um, gearing for Acid in DDO sucks. It's not as big of a deal with the Elder set and stuff, and maybe on, there's some merit to swapping to a different element, but in general, gearing for Acid sucks. Acid is mostly conjuration effects, which also is irritating. So if you want to use like an acid dragon breath on this character, you have to deal with that. Also, if you're not fire, that means you don't get access to holy fireball. And I don't need to explain why holy fireball is really good. Oh, haunted halls. Oh. Don't I have an LR heart? Um on so everyone gets one for free, but this character was made a long time ago, so no, I don't. Sadly. There's still there's still a little a little bit of lag going on here in DDO. Future Deep Numb Life, the straight up Pale Master using a Cardiac Blast, Dragon Breath, Energy Burst. Yep. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like people ask all the time, they go like, oh well, how do I deal with monsters that are immune to like negative damage? And I'm like, well the reason or the way you fix it is or like the way you deal with monsters that are immune to negative damage is you just um There we go. Uh, you just hit them with other spells. They're like, oh, but how do I deal with undead? Because I'd have to cast all these extra spells and unholy avatar. I'm like, no, cast meteor swarm. You goofballs. Decided to TR this character. I thought this one was complete. So it basically is. I decided to TR this character for two reasons. Reason number one is... Oh, we're just going here. Okay. The reason why I TR'd this character is because, um, one, this is my strongest character that I have. Two, it's the only character I feel comfortable TRing right now. And three, um, I wanted to be able to, so I want, like, for the purposes of going fast, I might as well TR my strongest character. Um, and three, this character is also, uh, I had done every single quest in the entire video game except for the Hunter and Hunted quests on R10. <laughs> so I'm like, well, if I want to get more XP, uh, I have to reset it. So that's what we did. So now I can get Reaper XP again. Um, the reason why is your first time bonuses. So the first time you complete a quest on Reaper mode, you get a bonus. I think it's 100 and something percent experience or 95% or whatever it is. And that stacks up on your Reaper XP. So the way that people farm it out is you get a character build that you feel comfortable or that you really like. You reincarnate with it. You get all the way up to level cap. You farm it all your gear. So your, your character's got everything you need. And then you run all the quests on whatever comfortable up Reaper level you can do. Maybe if that's, you know, you don't can't have a consistent group, so you run R4, you can get a semi-consistent group and your character is strong, you run R7. Or you have a guild group and you run R10. The librarian has left the room quick. And then, the once you have your group set up, I know your true intentions. you then kind of just go and start running quests. Um, I froze. That's cool. So you, start, you just go and start running quests. And, um... Once you 
are completed all the ones at endgame. So, you know, you run Salt Marsh, you run Feywild, you run whatever. Then you reincarnate into the exact same build. And then by the time you hit the level cap, you have all those first time bonuses again. It might sound like it takes a bunch of extra time to do, but it's actually definitely faster to do an entire past life and get your first time bonuses again than it is to just do a round of all of the end game quests um, without the bonuses. It's the reason why all the people that have like the billions of Reaper XP, you get it by reincarnating and running all of those things. I'm pretty sure pre basically everybody, except for the people that uh, did that Amber Temple exploit when it was still available, um, did the whole reincarnate refarm strategy. You just get way too much uh, XP from doing it. Plus, also, I just generally like the idea of, you know, playing this character, you know? I spend all this money and time I to, to buy this beautiful car, and then what, I'm just going to leave it in the shop all the time? Nah, sometimes you just got to take it for a drive, you know what I'm saying? Just want to show it off a little bit. Just a little bit. Also, you know what I should do? I should guess blur. So I don't even know why I looted the chest. You have found what you came for. It is time to leave this vile. Mmm, blur. Anyways, now we're gonna be going up for cone. And by the time my character gets cone, then I'm gonna feel comfortable with this build. But not yet. Wait until Tabaxi comes out? Oh, and I'm stoked. I mean, obviously I would like to keep racial completionist, but eh. Good enough for me. Zoom. No, I actually like running the different character builds and different characters, so I don't care too much. Like, I, I personally would never just buy an autos box for that sort of purpose. I understand why people do it. I just don't really see the, the goal in doing that. I know people that when something new comes out, they literally just autos box all three away and go back to the main build. I know several people that when Alchemist released, they just triple autos boxed and then play, you know, that's how they got their Alchemist past lives and then they were done. Which again is fine if that's what you want to do. I just don't get it. Like the new feature just comes out for the video game. Is Tabaxi coming up before the next hardcore? Um, is to oh, um, Tabaxi is definitely coming up before the next hardcore. They've said they wanted to release the expansion and then have hardcore after that, which is exciting because as somebody who um, wants to get a chance to play the Tabaxi, um, it means that this character might not achieve racial completionist until after uh, the next hardcore. If you're wondering why I'm also not like attacking all these things individually. Um, it's largely because my blasts just have trouble hitting in ranged. It's got the same range desync that range attacks have. And so that's why I'm mostly just using my big blast here. Here we go. We're good. Using Ash. Good old spell-like ability. Warlock is the kind of character that what I should be doing here is taking chain, but I don't really want to respec, so I'm not doing that. But I should, but I'm not. But I should, but I'm not. What Tabaxi is going to bring? I'm not a fan of Kent, so I'm looking forward to aesthetically. Not even cheetahs? What about lions? I don't know. As a young person, I've always thought the cheetah is a very cool animal. Yeah, what does Tabaxi do? Doesn't matter. I'm playing it on hardcore. Yeah, I can see that. It's kind of shocking to me that there is no, like, werewolf race in DDO. Or, like, I mean, sh uh, shifters are minor lycanthropes. But, like, full-on lycanthropes. Oh, there, there it is. Got him with the classic. Okay, I gotta, I gotta check out this, this video. Hold on, give me a sec here. There's a 30-second clip of the, the young Tom Kapoor. Uh, I just need to do one thing before I get this set up. Okay, what is this? As you make your way into the sewer, 
You are assailed by rank smells. The slick floor. Middle door. Thank you. Oh no, you told him middle door? Bro. Oh no. <laughs> I blame you for this. <laughs> you got him. You betrayed me. Oh, good job. Good job, dude. I just love that. He's like, oh, middle door? Oh, thanks. Doesn't think about it. Oh, no. Um, Just you guys are unsure. It's not the middle door. There are some scenarios where you may want to go through the middle door, but in that scenario, the middle door is actually trapped and makes you fall into a pit. Uh. Beetle wolf? Yeah. Wolf man. Yeah, that's great. Oh, I don't need any of this stuff. Why do I keep looking at all these items? I don't care. Bad brain. Yeah, so Tabaxi, we don't know exactly what Tabaxi are going to do. We do know that they get Charisma and Dexterity as their baseline stats in 5th edition. Um, so at least in current. And that usually informs what um, Sandstone Games is going to be doing with the character in future. Just because, you know, they follow along with... Um, what happens in pen and paper. Same thing with the Dragonborn and Tiefling and what have you. So, you know, we'll see. Although, they're not prone to giving too many stat bonuses away. I know that Tiefling, I think, is plus two charisma, plus one intelligence. Which, trust me, would be sick. Man, that's such a good baseline racial stat. Then you have to play as, like, a Tiefling, which is, like, a monster. Mm. Or somebody sees you and they go, Eek! Ack! Tiefling! What is this tiefling doing here? And you're like, uh, I'm uh, here to repair the mail mailbox. I'm here to I'm here to wa clean. I'm cleaning the wind. I'm taking. I got the. Uh, I'm good. I'm perfectly fine. Yeah, I think they wanted to add the wisdom just because it does make sense for like a divine race to have a bonus to wisdom, considering all the divine casters using wisdom. So that makes sense to me. All right, now we're on stealthy repossession. So unlike the last time where I was playing bow rogue where I was getting carried, very soon my character's going to be doing tremendous amounts of damage, which I'm excited about. Exciting, tremendous amounts of damage. A set of damage, damage. Is that probably going to have to bard rogue as for swashbuckler? If it's in, if it's dex charisma, I mean, swashbuckler just makes sense. Hey! I'm busy, dude. Go away, Plague Reaper. Plague Reaper literally just comes hits me in the back as I'm doing other stuff. So rude, man. That is one of the screwy things about having a bunch of past lives. I literally got hit by a Reaper and it didn't even break my temp HP. That is that is weird. There's another Reaper over here. Hey. Stop stop that fear. You 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 stop. Oh, he's too fast. Gotcha. And we're done. Cool. I think I can just recall here, because nothing's gonna catch me, so I think I'm good. Because all the monsters that would catch me had to run all the way around. Oh, maybe. Now oh, we're good. If you could one-shot all the mobs, true. Very true. Um, fortitude saves. Hey, fortitude saves. Is anything happening for the event? Um... For what event? For the event? 
um, the, uh, well, it is the last day of February, and since it's the last day of February, just remember that either you are probably paying rent today or tomorrow, if you're unsure. So make sure that you are uh, taking the time to pay rent either today or tomorrow. Does spell sword apply to chains? Yes. Because it's just an attack, so it applies anything that a basic attack applies. The anniversary? Um, so, if you didn't know, Let's Do League, you've got um, three classes, the Druid, Monk, and Warlock, as well as seven races have gone free to play as far as the le uh, for the anniversary event. And they're giving away a bunch of different cosmetics, so you have uh, special cloaks that they're giving away, which is exciting. So you've got, um, not cloaks, but the, the different outfits. So there's five or six different colored outfits that they're giving away for free. You just talk to the genie. Um, there's also some new stuff you can buy from the anniversary in terms of cosmetics. There's also, until the end of the day today, a 25% XP boost um, in the game, which is exciting. It was over the weekend for the anniversary. And um, there's also a bunch of sales on expansions and stuff. So all the expansions are 75% off in the DDO market with um, the most recent expansion being 50% off. Also, bear in mind, uh, oh, I, I heard you say we need one more, and then I, I didn't do it. Um, Warlock is free to play, yeah. There could be a Web Warlock iconic, we don't know. Um, and I'm trying to think, is anything else happening in DDO? You should have taken Spring Attack and you were like, keep up with the Fast Boys? I can't. I need to bet take Maximized and Power. Uh, he's in House Fjarlin with the Anniversary Event. So the Anniversary Event always takes place in House Fjarlin by the Chapter House. And it's there. Um, oh yeah, and also, today's the last day to transfer stuff off of Hardcore. Do you have characters on Hardcore League that you care about? That you're like, man, I'm going to transfer this to this other server because I wanted to preserve this item or effect. Well, guess what? Today is the last day. If you don't transfer off of Hardcore, all of your stuff on Hardcore is getting deleted. They're deleting the server today. Or not today, probably tomorrow. But, like, 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. So you have, like, maybe 20-something hours to get all your stuff off of Hardcore. So if you have things you didn't take off of Hardcore, please get your stuff off of the Hardcore server before it gets deleted. Are you buying the pot for party favors? Oh, that's a good idea. I should do that. I should get one of the ones. Isn't there's a free one, right? There's like a coupon. What is the coupon called? Um. I didn't actually check this out. Um, DDO Chronicle. It's probably in the Chronicle. Uh, Warlock, Warlock, Warlock. Hey, what's up, Tharman Heartsbane? Quest points. Mm. I get a Warlock feat. So because you get all these Warlock feats, this is the reason why you um, you can't have nice things. All my gear is already in my, in my inventory. Item. Item. I can't use that yet. Item. Bracers. New helmet. This. Here we go. I prepped all this stuff. Also, I apparently only used one charge of this wand. I'm going to put this wand here and delete this one. Alright, waterworks. The I have no points. Damn. I want cone! I don't get cone until 6, which makes me sad. Cool. So now I have all my slots filled. Which gives me quite a few different stats. 36 Charisma. I got the 10% mana cost reduction. I got a bunch of other stuff. Okay, we're good. Um, oh, Toast to 16. Is that what it is? Okay, perfect. I'm going to get that. Uh, redeem code. Toast to 16. Apply. Sweet. I drink the party punch while walking. Get out of here, bad guys. I don't think I'm going to drink party punches the entire time, but if I can get some extra party favors, that would be convenient.
You need that Reaper Mythic level 1 Borderland set? Yeah, if I can get a full Reaper Mythic Borderland set, that would be amazing. When full multi and Warlock for Hardcore, is it worth it to get Greater Spell Focus and Spell Focus? Also, is it worth it to add points to Charisma versus Con? I mean, yeah, it depends if you like damage. Basically, the answer is, it is slow if you don't do that. Well, not slow, but slower, right? So, Warlocks get a lot of their damage from their packed damage. If your packed damage isn't landing, then it's going to be a little slower than some other characters. Or than, like, a, a, a regular Warlock. So I would say it depends. Can you stop parrying me, please? Um... In my opinion, you definitely can kind of ignore at least some of pack damage. I would, as long as you pick something that isn't reflex based. So if you go Fey or Celestial, then you literally just dump a lot of your damage to zero, because any monsters with evasion will just make their save and take it to zero. But if you can stack up enough pack damage, you can play characters like um, Great Old One or um, the Great Old One or uh, uh, Cold, both of which, uh, or sorry, yeah, I guess it's Cards Rise Storm. Oh my god. Oh my god. This guy's got the moves. He just is spinning around me. I don't even know how to fight it. Oh god. It's, it's too dangerous, man. It's too dangerous. Anyway. Carcerai Storm, or the other one that I was talking about, um, Great Old One, are both will saves. The benefit of them being will saves is it means that monsters tend to have lower will saves, so even if your DCs aren't as high, you can still hit them anyway. And also, even if the monsters make their save, they still take half of the damage, which is good. So if you wanted to do that and kind of like ignore your charisma for the most part and ignore DCs, um, I would say also go all out if you're going to do that. So don't be like, oh, I, I'm going to pump up my charisma, then not take the DC bonuses. No, you want both. So if you're going to be leveling up con, damn it, I rolled a one. I hate these spiders. This video game's too hard. All right. Anyway, if you're going to be doing that already... Um, just kind of go all in. If that makes sense. What are party favors? Uh, party favors are the consumable that you trade in to get all the anniversary stuff. You get them by running the anniversary event or by buying the uh, party punch and then just collecting them while you play. Uh, I'm working on it. Yeah, I got a party favor. So if you want to go see the whole list of things you can get, just go to the anniversary event that's happening in House Fjarlin and talk to Tolero, who is the anniversary vendor, and she will give you all the stuff. Well, not just give you all the stuff. She'll show you the whole loot list, and you can see if there's anything that you want. Um, somebody was asking me on YouTube, they're like, hey, what's like, what are the good items to get? In my opinion, outside of the forum post, probably none of them. I don't think any of the items are really good enough to weren't actually going for outside of cosmetics. Now, the cosmetics look great. There are a lot of fantastic-looking cosmetics. But in terms of, like, the actual items? E yeah, I don't know. The party favors from just doing quests? E only if you buy and drink the party punch. You can't get them by not drinking the party punch. Oh, the coffees. Yeah, I actually do want the coffees. So that is a, a good... Ah, what the heck? Go away, ooze. You're slow. Oh, good. I love flame horns. Oh, I forgot I strip his fire immunity with ash. Ha ha ha. I strip fire immunity already. It's a 5%, which means if you wanted to buy item, buy one item, you have to kill 4,000 monsters or something like that per item. We did the math the other day. Whatever 5% times 80 is. Or, sorry, 80 divided by 5%. Is the average number of kills. Universe of Rent, not the gen. Can you access to the Hall of Heroes? Can it? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, I'm just going to do this. It's faster. Yo, what's up, Mike? How are you doing? Um, 
I saw your I saw your message. If I wasn't in a race, I I would have I would have gotten back to you. But apparently in a race, and by in a race I mean we're just going breakneck speeds. So I've got the timer on here. I'm doing I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? No, we already, we already did that. Man, I'm so bad at that. I do that all the time. I'll be like, oh, how are you? Oh, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. How are you? And then you're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're stuck in a causal loop. Abort mission. Abort mission. Hmm. XP. It's, it happens to me all the time. I don't know what it is. It's like, you know when, or, or like you're at the drive-thru or whatever, and they're like, oh, you're like, all right, enjoy your food. And you're like, oh, you too. Fuck, shit, shit. No, you can't enjoy my food. Only I can enjoy my food. Damn it. Just in your car, upset. You... You my disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. The problem is, I don't have any area of effect, so I'm just gonna... Except for my one 10 second attack. I'm just gonna hope that this works out just fine, and I somehow got a stun on that guy. Hey, where'd my attack go, video game? Give me my attack back. Yeah. Like, oh, thanks for the coffee. Yeah. Uh, you too? Oh, shit. Whenever somebody says, have a nice day, it's usually not bad. But yeah, whenever it's like, oh, something, anything else, you're, my brain is like, oh, I can't do it. Oh, yeah. The fact that you can drink the coffees while moving is nice because it also makes us they don't get deleted, which is good. All right. Everything is clean. Didn't tell everyone I went looking for your elixir's discovery. Oh, nice. I'm sure I will in response, so I don't get that wrong. It's okay. Food thing. So it says, enjoy your movie. I mean, they might enjoy the movie. If somebody's like a theater person, so they like work in a movie theater, there's a good chance that they like listen to the movies through the walls or something. I don't know. How long does it take to get to 30? Um, well, for a normal person, I don't know how long it takes to get to 30. Uh, for me, it probably takes me, on average, probably about 30 hours at most. Mm, that sounds right. Yeah, it probably takes me about 30 hours. I don't know how, how long it would take the average person, but it takes me about 30 hours. Also, what's up, Hartman? How you doing? The strong smell of sewage permeates the air around... Frickin'. this here today we're gonna be i'm i don't know how fast we're gonna do it but i'm hoping we can get it under 12 but we'll see we're at five and it's been an hour so for people that are less experienced i have no idea how long does it take you guys to get to get to level 30 that's a great question Ch chat poll ever thought about trying to catch people with guard and tell them to have a bad day to see if they auto respond no i used to do stuff like that as like weird uh shake-ups but people don't like it. The problem is, so when I used to work in, in retail for years, you'd just say weird stuff to people and see how they would react. The problem is, is that most people are robots. And what I mean by that is we, you have your routine. You just kind of go through the motions during the day. So when you say something to somebody they're not expecting, they're like, it just hits them and it kind of shakes up their whole core of their personality. Like an easy example is like if you're in McDonald's and you're like a busy line, just like, you know, so it's like you're or like a, just a regular fast food place and it's really, really busy. Um, what you do is you're watching and you're waiting in line. And then when you finally get to the front, when they go, okay, what can I get for you? You just go, oh, what do you recommend? Their brain's going to go fra get frazzled because they're they're not used to answering a question like that. Because it's like they just answered like, yeah, okay, I'll get like two Big Macs and uh, the combo. And uh, can I get the super size and the fries? And uh, I'll get this. And they're just kind of telling you. What's going on? And you just like punch the buttons and punch the buttons and do the thing. Which is not a bad thing, uh, necessarily, because it's just it's efficiency. That's how, how things work. When you get into a groove and a rhythm, you're kind of going on it. And so shaking that up on people is not always the nicest thing to do.
Two weeks in quest might be about 40 hours. Mmm, 40 hours. Die, please. Die. Very casual player, around two months playing, 48 hours per week, 60 hours total. Okay. 20 hours in two months. Yeah, so for me, it depends. Um, I would say that I do usually do one pass life a week, so one to 30 in a week. But I'm very experienced and I know where I'm going, and I try to stay fairly efficient. And now we go down here. Today, obviously, is a bit of a different scenario because we are we're going fast. This is these are the fast boys, so the different different story. But it can take it can take quite a long time. Although in um, in it, it's important to note that the uh, leveling in Dungeons and Dragons Online is definitely a faster process than a lot of other MMO video games because it's like one of the core uh, gameplay loops is just to reincarnate constantly. So the whole point in what we're doing is we're just playing the game repeatedly to get more and more and more and more and more and more, and more stats. And so it can't take that long. I hate shooting at oozes. They suck. Yeah, so right now with all my buffs active, I'm at 140, 187 fire spell power. That's so gross. I didn't, I didn't realize I had 187 fire spell power. Yes, same here. Path of Exile and Elden Ring have messed up my TRing. I'm trying, still trying to keep on the one TR a week, but it's uh, it's hard. It's hard right now. That's okay though. Like leveling fast is not something that everybody has to do. It's just something that we all can, like, you know, uh, ex enjoying your experience while playing, I think, is the most important thing. And this is why I don't run at this breakneck speed every single day. Because if I did, I would burn out on this video game really quick. Stop. Go away. Because there was a time where I actually did, like, burn out on DDO. Um, while I've been, like, since I've transitioned to full-time live, I, like, um, absolutely had, like, a, a period of time where I just didn't want to play the game. I just don't want to log in. I don't want to play the game. Um, I wanted to do pretty much anything else, but I was like, I gotta do DDO. That's why I had to make a change up, which was uh, restructuring my schedule so that way I kind of just, I do whatever I want in the game and I stop using XP potions, and that heavily changed my entire perspective. Four to six months, yep. It's all about practice, man. It's all about practice. He's somewhere on the west side here. I just don't know where I tab targeted him. He's right here. Here of XP and Slayer Pots. So, I don't care. I don't care that they exist. I just choose not to use them most of the time. You're going to pick something used to the fact that Tiefling Warlock can now be considered 100% free to play build? Yes. So, if you want to play this character build, I literally have it written. I, I just posted a video about this character build. So, if you want to play this one without all of the bells and whistles that I have, like the crazy eye stats or whatever, um, you can see that. Uh, where? Okay. Didn't realize that Ven is supposed to be a child since they use an adult model figure as a young model. Yes, Ven is a child. So Ven and Arlos got like kidnapped by the kobolds and then murdered. They're a load of quests. I never do them because the XP is kind of shit. Yeah. So, one thing I learned by doing my super XP chart is a lot of the quests that I assume were like kind of shitty XP are actually not that bad because you can do them fast. 
So, like, for example, the House J quests, like, um, not Tangle Root, um, like Red Willow Ruins and stuff, that quest seems like the XP is kind of bad. But it's actually really good. Um, I can't believe that thing is alive. It just doesn't seem like the XP is really good because you're like, well, it takes a long time. But if you kind of just like do, you avoid the optionals and just kind of run the objectives, it's really fast and it's still worth like 10k. And you get it done in like two minutes, three minutes. Those are burning. I feel like I'll get a Zerg. Yes, exactly. And so that's one of the main issues that I have as well when it comes to like the potions is that you feel like. Reverse Uno card. Um, the potions make me feel like I have to just sprint through the game. And so when people are like, oh, you know, I'm lost, I don't know where I'm going, or like, can I need help, or like, can we farm out this thing, do you want to repeat this quest? My immediate answer is like, no, I don't want to do that. But I know that helping out people is something that I personally like to do in this game. So when my brain doesn't want to help out other players or work together with other people because the potions make me not want to, because it's like, well, my potion is burning, though. Spent three hours running raids instead of Reapers? Yes. I also have the same thing. Um, I had a Sovereign Potion running on my Bard, and I just ran raids because I was like, well, I want to run the raids, so I'm going to do it. Got him. Is it like where there's smoke? One minute fifty? It's not that bad if you kind of just hold W and you sprint through the quest fast. And XP pots, they're way more XP than you need. This is it's about speed. That's it. If I have a fifty percent XP po potion, I'm going to level up fifty percent faster than somebody else. If we're both running the same quest and doing the same thing, also it means you can skip a lot of quests too. So longer quests and chains. So for example, Madstone Crater can be quite a long quest in comparison to the other Madstone quests. So the fact that you can skip stuff with it is very, very good. Yeah. Because you can just go like, oh, well, I'm not going to do Madstone this life. So that saves 30 something minutes instantaneously versus somebody else who might have to run that quest you basically only do the good high xp quests and skip everything else anything else that's even considered medium xp you just entirely bypass it kind of weird Oh yeah, I have my daily dice roll to use. I gotta roll up that gold roll. See, I know I'm obviously uh, streaming and up a little bit earlier than normal, which is kind of weird. I I do not make plan on making this a habit, but yeah. Also, um, so with the release of Elden Ring and a whole bunch of other stuff, I had to delay it um, this Friday. I, I set up the schedule. I have to adjust it because I will be... Um, uh, Going to, I have had to move the appointment around to fit in like the actual streaming schedule I want is I'm going to be actually donating blood on Friday. I was supposed to do it two weeks ago. And then I was like, I'll do it last week. And then last week was Elden Ring and Lost Ark and everything else. And I was like, oh, God. So I'll get there. What's next, DDI? Uh, great question. We haven't talked about it. My last week has been so busy, I just haven't thought about it. Die, you cats. How many party streams have I gotten so far? Uh, I don't know. I can tell you. It's Zach. Just gotta check. Um, I don't think I have it. Is it is it an uh, ingredient? I think it's an ingredient. Party favors, I've gotten three. It seems that the final resting place of the orc elders has a watchful 
and three party favors in total. Oh yeah, did I make more progress? No, I didn't play any Elden Ring yesterday. I didn't log in at all. I did. I wanted to make sure I'm streaming the whole thing, so I didn't want to um, play it without streaming it. And also, yesterday I was insanely busy. I was like awake to a sleep busy, so which is always fun. Oh well. What are you going to do? Within 15, 10, 12, 15 minutes, the group will stop. We're going to do it in under 10. But, because there's even, the, the fast boys have even faster boys' ways of getting through that quest. As I said before, the, the, Party favors and the party potion should be a... There should be 5% chance to get party favors from every quest, and the potion should bring you up to 10% with an extra... from the extra 5. Um, I think I can still damage this stuff with Ash. Oh. Never mind. I was like, oh yeah, I can do this thing. No, I can't. Wait a minute, the methods aren't fire immune? Okay, now I'm learning something. I thought these would have been entirely fire immune, but apparently... What? The fire elemental's not fire immune? Whoa. Okay. I didn't even know there were monsters in this game that weren't fire immune. That, like, or like fire creatures that were, were not a fire immune. Interesting. Um, because stopping for loot is good when you're running quests on Reaper mode. You can get, like, Reaper mythic pieces of gear. Really, the only chests that I'm looting are, like, the, um, the chests that drop, uh, named loot. Everything else doesn't matter. There's, like, a lot of pieces of gear are pretty regular, but if I, if I get a mythic Reaper... Um, pair of, like, clockwork boots. Well, that could be plus eight PRR for the leveling process. It's pretty good. Whereas, like, chests that don't have any of that stuff, so optional chests and chests of a lot of, like, the older DDO quests before they figured out that giving out named loot and, and chests was an idea. Um, yeah, that's that's a, a different animal, a different beast altogether. There you go. Where's the burn? Get lucky, switch to still, still, and haven't, and haven't still. Wait, haven't still be soloing most stuff? What? I've talked about this before, but like, if people are still having trouble getting groups on Arganesson, the larger server, there's there's something going on other than player population. Like, on some part of it, it's like player population, and there's some other part of it where a lot of people will do this. They'll open up the grouping panel, go, oh, no groups on my level, and then they turn it off. Like, just click create, and then do your own thing. And then people will join in. There's a lot of people that just sit and wait for groups to show up instead of making their own. They're just all sitting at the ready at their keyboard, just kind of watching it. Like, where's the group? Where's the group? You hear the ghostly voice again. Yeah. We're going to have dead time zones? Yeah. Um, nighttime EST. The majority of the player base plays during the daytime EST. Not daytime, but like, you know. Uh, not EST, but North American hours. And then we got the book, and then we get the bird. You'll do. Does anything even drop out of this quest? I think it's just the trinket, right? Yeah, just the trinket, and it's got a mythic one, but it's not good enough. Damn. I wanted that mythic three, Reaper three. I don't think there's a re re er, Reaper trinket bonus. 
Unfortunate. There is something else nearby that can deliver a song back to the gatekeepers. You realize that Rosemary's parrot has learned. You're just the first few times. I had no idea how bad the train wreck could be. Correct. If nobody knows what's happening in Vaughn Five, it can take a long time. Like I said, if you have like one or two people that know how to do the raid, they'll just tell people what's going on. But if you just open up the party and then not even one person has any idea how to do it, you have to like rediscover it. Ooh, that's tough. Good old aging player base. I'm so slow, I need my sprint boost. The air grows more humid. I'm running. The next chamber. That's it, yeah. Bring in boomer players, man. Almost made it. Oh, I got one hit on a monster. Oh, I got another one. And if you slayers never surprise me on people who kept dying while soloing slayers? Yes. So it's that's not a surprise. So the reason why I say it's not a surprise is because slayers are very, very, very easy. Unless you have like 400 to 600 hit points. If you're in the low amount of hit points, slayers are very, very hard. Because the monsters are still epic monsters. They're still casting like, you know, Meteor Swarm and other things. And it can be brutally difficult sometimes if you're not paying attention. The Guardian collapses into a heap and sparks of electricity jump into the nearby rune carved stones. The air grows warm here, where the light streams in from above the stone circle. A single massive apple rests on the ground beside you. It seems to be and loot. Dagger of Liturgist? Nothing. Yeah, Lich Avengers don't mess around. True. And also, again, a lot of people in Epics don't take any healing. And I don't know why. I don't know exactly why, but a lot of them just don't take any healing. And I keep telling people, like, take some healing. You'll watch these people that just walk around. They'll be, like, level 25. And they have nothing from the healing in Epic. No healing abilities in Epic Destinies. And I know that it can be slow or frustrating um, to... Yeah, that sounds fine. Um, I know it can be like slow or frustrating to have to spend points in trees that you don't necessarily want to spend in. I get it, but like, eh, come on, man, it's good. It's it's important. Like, ah, yeah, I want to go all damage. No, I got to spend my points in legendary dreadnought and fury and shadow dancer. I have no idea how I'm so, so, so far behind in this quest. The string 42,069,420 occurs at position 52,437,783. This string occurs one times in the first 200 M digits of buy, counting from the first digit after the decimal point. So, I never knew how much I needed that information. Thank you. Even Pi is super dank. 420, 69, 420? Gotta double down, man. There's barely epic characters in heroic gear? Yes. A crumpled figure lies inside a nearby cell. It must be one of the captives. Mm, yeep. Get out of here, wolf. I mean, technically, yes. It's just not usable in most ways. Too much processing. I think we're good. All right, housekeeping. Uh, are there any other threes? Ironstone. Yep. 
Yep, yeah, sounds good. Wait, is this a is this a website that lets you find out strings in Pi? Oh, that's fun. Oh, I have that mug too. I literally have that math mug that was bought for me because somebody was like, "Yeah, you're you're like a, a nerdy kid," and so I I have a math mug. I literally have the one that's on this website. Very fun. Uh, I'm frequently asked where people can get such a ridiculously large amount of pi. Be warned that 50 million digits of pi takes up 50 megabytes. Yep. This can take up to four hours to download with a 28.8k modem. Oh man, those 28.8k modems is so long. Hey, good morning, Bertle. How are you doing? What's up? Good morning. Also, welcome to the stream team, Spear Strong, Old School, Cormai, Beyond Knox, and Toddy Brown, because freaking you gifted out a whole bunch of subs. Dude, that's extremely kind of you. Thank you so much for the support. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're feeling good. What's happening? What's going on? Ironstone is four. We're going to do Ironstone, then we're going to do uh, STK1, then we're going to take six. Ironstone, we're just going to do it because it's here, and it's fast, and it's easy. I wish... I had Cone for Ironstone because that would make my life so much easier. Because Cone makes my life so much easier. But we're not at Cone yet. We're at uh, not Cone. So what are you going to do? I do get Cone very soon. Never winter nights an A well at a 14.4k modem. No, not me. There has to be something we can do. Mutters by. I keep having this dream, says that. Acoustic computers? Oh man. It's these ancient pieces of technology that I am not familiar with. Give me a youngin. At like 60 significant digits, we know the observable universe down to the Planck length. Seems like science has gone too far. Oh, True, science has gone too far. You know who hasn't gone too far? Horse. Oh my god, dude. Thank you so much for gifting up free intense subs. I really appreciate that. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're feeling good. I hope you're having just a fantastic and great day. And I'm extremely grateful. It's literally crazy to me. I don't understand. I am baffled, but I am I am I am gracious. No, maybe that's not the right word. Um I, I, I'm happy though, but thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. I hope you're doing super good. Um, I, I try my best to make interesting and, uh, and, and good content here for everyone that's watching. And um, I'm going to continue to do so, maybe, uh, or not. We'll see. Um, but yeah, welcome to the stream team. Jack Plank, aggravated proctologist. Uh, Wikipedia 95. Um, Raneth, uh, Medieth. Not GM Ben Feingold, Darian Coldstone, and uh, Ashendai, Uncle Elephant, and MLG DDO Gamer. Welcome all of you to the stream team. Appreciate the support. Thank you so much, Horse. That's literally crazy. I'm extremely, extremely grateful, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. You and Bertle and how we doing with the bits, and just also everyone that's tuning in to watch. I mean, I'm excited because I'm drinking coffee. We're playing some DDO, and I'm just having a good morning. Usually, this would be about the time that I'm, like, getting out of bed and waking up. So the fact that, you know, we're already here is, uh, really screwy. But hey, what are you going to do? Go down all the numbers till he died to make pie. Probably, I don't know. Some nerd. There we go. Quest over. Leave me the harbor is blocked. Let me out. Free me! Every 10 subs from horse is another splash of Baileys in the coffee. That's not a bad idea. Help calm the nerves. Some bits to push up to level 5. Thanks for streaming early. Stream wall fippy dundas core HF clap. Yo, thanks, Cruiser. Um, somehow you push up to 100%. But it's one of those 100%s so that doesn't count as 100%. It's like a 99.9 .9 that's rounded up to 100%. <laughs> it's just really dumb. Um, so thank you so much for the support. I really, really, really appreciate that. Same for you, Vuko Veragrona and Blue Phoenix. Thanks, you guys. Wow. I really appreciate it. 
Who knows? Maybe we'll set a new Quest. lap record. I don't know. Okay, apparently the hype train is just resisting movement. It is incapable of increasing in height as of right now. Yeah, it's just staying at 100. Even with Quentoxic giving it a sub to Zohan, which I'm very grateful of, and I hope you're having a great day, Quentoxic. I really appreciate you tuning in. I hope you've been having a good time with Elden Ring. You said you got a plus six somber weapon, which is impressive because I don't even have a plus six somber weapon, so I'm very curious as to how you did that. But, oh my god. And then, how we doing in horse? Okay, what is happening, you guys? Another 15 subs? Okay. I gotta do something. Like, um... Be even more excited. But I've only had so much coffee. Seriously, this is a uh, very insane showing of support. Thank you, guys. Especially so early in the morning. Maybe it's because I'm streaming earlier, so then there's some people that are like, Oh, man, now I have something to watch while I'm at work taking calls I don't want to take. Which is entirely possible. So, seriously, dude. Thank thank you, all of you. Um, oh, Fertile, Horse, How We Doing, Cruiser Zero, Blue Phoenix, Vuka Vera... Vuca Vera Grona. Um, oh, I really, really, really appreciate it. It's insane. Welcome to Stream Team. X Tyrant, uh, Sandor, uh, oh, Cultway Freezer, uh, Stinger, Big Betty Boom Boom, as well as Legacy of Pace, HDM, Clexi, Rufy Bard, uh, Wood H, or just Wood. I remember that. Nemeth, Dalnarak, Oh Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Osinos and Dark Pink. Thank you, you guys. That's insane. Can you break Stream Tom's brain? No. I, my brain is made out of, like, um, those, like, old school, uh, extremely dangerous heavy metals. So you can't break it. Um, but it already has uh, work, worsening and deepening damage over time. I do need to drink some water, which I will do shortly. As I walk back away from this monster. But thanks, you guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, 100%. T5 hype trade a shot of a fireball. Can I'm trying to go fast. I'm trying to go fast. i got to be part of the fast boys. I really shouldn't be drinking first thing in the morning. Also, I can't drink on Twitch because people give me money. Because that is problematic in terms of Twitch's terms of service. So we can't do that. So, unfortunately. That's just not how that works. They get really mad if you do stuff like that. But hydrate, good idea. Mm -mm. Uh, oh, sure. I missed your question. Uh, so let me just scroll up. It's called Can we confirm if the base price of Fist of the White Stallion item dump says 500? Then who knows what you are drinking? Wait, 50,000? Um Hold on. Um no, I I didn't see your question. Hold on. Um can anyone here confirm the base price of the Fast White Stallion item dump says 50,000, but current wiki screenshot says 1,000. Fast White is that in the store? There was a sale on mounts. That might be screwing it up. It's a gold roll item? Oh. The base price item dump with the wiki screenshot says 1,000. Um, I'm not sure I understand. If it's a gold roll, how does it have a price? Oh, if anyone has this... Oh, you want to know the price of the certificate? Oh, like the the actual item price of like the base value of the, the platinum. I have no idea. So I've actually never gold rolled a single horse. Ever. Even with daily gold rolls, when horses were a thing, I never gold rolled a horse. Maybe today is the day, but I've actually never done it. Um, so I whenever I hear somebody go, Oh, dude, I just got a horse in my gold roll. I go... Is my general reaction to that. Because I, I I have never gold rolled my own horse. I'd like to gold roll my own horse someday. And maybe I will. Maybe I will. But it is not this day. Now 
Nightmare Horse without the saddle from the gold roll. Yeah. I got the Phantom Steed from the raid, so I'm feeling pretty good today, but still, it would be nice. That's when heart from a gold roll recently. Mm, need a horse prediction? Wait, you want me to gold roll the horse? Mm, wait, you want me to predict whether I'm going to get a horse from today's gold roll? That's a way stricter prediction, and also I would freak out. All right, sure, I can set that up. Um, when I have a break here for being a fast boy. Yo, what's up, Midnight Fox? How are you doing? Did you finish Elden Ring yet? Did you get the Elden Ring? I didn't play it all yesterday for two reasons. Reason number one, I was insanely busy. I ran my D&D campaign. I had a bunch of just organization, general organizational and stuff to do around the house. So, you know, doing laundry and doing all sorts of different types of errands and what have you, which is stuff we all do. I just shirked my responsibilities for three days so I could play video games, which was fun. Your builds have consistently made this game more enjoyable for me. Thank you. Oh my god, and then Case... Casey Montana. Freaking... Bro, thank you so much. That's extremely kind of you. You just gave me 50 Canadian dollars. Do you know how many Canadian dollars that is? I don't because of my uh, bad understanding of the education system and the fact that it's bigger than the fingers that I have on my hands. But I am extremely, extremely grateful. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you so much, dude. That is just insanely kind of you. Um, wow. Thanks, man. That's that's awesome. I'm very grateful. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a good time. I hope you're having a good day. I'm glad I can make more character builds. I'm going to continue to do that. I have no intention of stopping doing that. Some people might, but not not this guy. This necromancer must be the source of I got more character builds on the way. In the way? Out of the way? I got more character builds. So don't you don't you fret. Don't you worry. Don't you frurry. Everything is good. We're good. And how many years have I been playing the game? Me? Uh, I've been playing the game since it, before it released. In the prehistoric times. Because I played it in the beta. Breakable. 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 Remember when you're finished, but I fight, defeated Ragadan, which is the most amazing fight I've ever seen. Yeah, that's the one that's in the red, the red castle, whatever, right? I apparently couldn't do that because I went and the guy was like, you have to wait until the stars align. I was like, all right. Also, I didn't find Alexander Majarman, the Jar Warrior, who, you know, said he wanted to go to the festival and he wanted to meet me there. And he wasn't at the festival, so i got to figure out where he is so I can send him there. Oh, I see. I'll go to the manor. I got gotcha. you. Have you played Metal Slug? No, I have not. Are Feywild gear is good for Warlock or not? Um, I'm wearing a lot of it in Heroics, anyway. I have a whole bunch of Feywild gear. I got the Wind Riders and the Dead Ringers, and that's not Feywild gear, but it's fine. Green Dragon Soul Bracers, Robe of Autumn Winds, Winter Court Necklace, and Crown of Snow. The Crown of Snow is very good on all Warlocks because it has a freeze effect that can go off whenever you cast a spell. And it's important to note that the freeze effect, um, since you cast spells constantly as a Warlock, every time you hit somebody, uh, you're always getting the freezes off, so it's a really, really good. Ever thought about trying an Abyssal Pact Warlock? Yeah, I've thought about it. The problem with Abyssal Pact is that it's not bad. It's that whenever I do end up playing Warlock, I usually have like a weird kooky build that requires, you know, one of the other Warlock pieces. Oh, cool. Can I finish? Okay. And we double recall and level up. Yep. Yeah. So do you only get stats from a greater rune when you use a rune arc? Correct. So if you have one of the greater runes and then you use the rune arc, it gives you the bonus stats. It's basically like the difference between it being alive and dead is the way to think about it. So now in older Dark Souls games, you lose health when you're dead and then you got to use a humanity to come back to life. It's the same thing, except rune arcs are exceedingly rare and I do not know a consistent way to get them other than um, helping other players. So if you set down your summon sign and get summoned and then you help somebody beat a boss, then you get one rune arc. If you fail, you wasted your time. So that's cool. All right, level six, uh, level up. Hello. I would like to level up. I would like the feat completionist. Mmm, even more disgustingly high stats. And plus dude all saving throws. Thanks, buddy. 
And I believe I have one more item here. Oh, this replaces this. So I lose my stance, but I gain all the sheltering. I will probably keep this over the other stance. And then I'm going to grab this, this, and I need one more point for cone. So I get cone and one enhancement point. All right. Okay, so in 40 minutes of party punch, going as fast as I can, blowing up all the monsters, I've gotten eight party favors. So would I recommend party punch? No. Unless you, like, really don't want to do the anniversary event. I mean, I got one for free, but... The way it goes, I guess. If you're wondering why I'm not taking any of these cores, it's because I'm trying to get the important stuff. Um, things that give more power. This level range is not the best. True. Yeah, there's less monsters in this level range. F big fact. Stupid on Elden Ring? Oh, yes. What is what is stupid on Elden Ring that you found out? No, since you started playing. Who? Wait, who's had a minus 5% max HP buff? Me? Or like everybody? Is it from that lady that hugs you? Oh, okay, so she just gives you minus 5% your HP? It's not a big deal. Like, I don't think 5% HP is going to prevent me from beating any of these quests. Like, beating the game at all, so I don't care. As long as, as, long as you're mature, you'll have the debuff. Interesting. I never noticed. That's fine, I guess. No big deal. What's a little debuff between friends, you know? Yeah, I have like 31 or 32 Vigor or something like that. I started putting points into life, and I will say, starting with 10 life and moving up to into 20 and then moving into 30, your character feels dramatically better. Um, I think that a lot of people that are getting bodied haven't put points into Vigor. And honestly, thinking about it again, I would probably literally pump Vigor up to 20 right away if I did it again. Like, like literally the first thing I would probably do if I was to restart is pump Vigor to, to 20 instantly. I had no idea how, how much of an impact it would have on my character. But having this health bar that's like now a quarter of the way across the screen is good. Especially considering getting the tiers to upgrade your flask is really easy. You have Godric into a villain for your D&D campaign? No. Um, Godric is gross. He's a gross abomination. I'm not a big fan of him. So no, I don't plan on doing that. Maybe someday, but mm, yeah. Yeah, Margit's cool. I like his summonable sword. That's a cool concept. I've always liked the idea of playing characters that can summon their own weapons. Like, instead of actually having a sword, you have like an energy sword that's summoned from your like pure force of will. It's one of the reasons why in Path of Exile, I actually really like the weapon energy blade. Um, if you've never played around with it. Um, you can get the ogre and the elemental over there. Um, because Energy Blade is a Path of Exile weapon that is similar. It does the same thing. Someone gets full 99s and everything? That is a good question. Someone's going to find an exploit before somebody actually does it. Oh, double Legolas is going to the game. 100%. Absolutely. I'm going to have them fight a dude. It might, doesn't have to be an undead, but it'll definitely be a dude with four arms. And then it'll be like, okay, I'm going to roll for the characters because I use roll 20 so they can see the initiative and all the character names. So it'll be like, okay, you've got, you know, Warrior and you have this and you have Double Legolas. and like, Double Legolas? Is exploit for the speedrun? Probably. 
But even with infinite runes, so it still takes a long time to actually get everything to 99. How infinite is infinite? That's the real question. No, oh, I'm so slow. I need to move fast. I don't have flight foot greaves. I might need to get those for later. Up we go. There's large dog creatures on the red side of the map. Yeah. Are you telling me I can play a song to soothe them? To get them to follow me? Interesting. Oh, I mean, I've killed I've killed a whole bunch of them. They're not really that hard. You just kind of dodge around them and then get underneath. Like most of the big creatures, the answer is just dodge around and get underneath. I like Dark Souls, but man, that the fact that that strategy is so consistently good is just dodge around, get underneath, and you're good. Oh, is this a big monster? Cool. That means you have to get underneath it and hit it in the feet. Oh yeah, I am not somebody who speed runs any of the Souls games at all. I slow run it if anything. Turn on your scoundrel past life. Uh, I only have two, actually. And so, since I only have two, I actually get more movement speed from running with, um... Uh... Ash. Not Ash. Um, Expeditious. This is Hetman Shard's abode. My area of effect sucks. Give me AoE. I just need AoE, man. I just need Cone. Once we finish this next quest, I can get Cone. I'm probably going to town and grab it. Is it worth it towning and grabbing Cone? No, probably not. Is my BTA Quiver of Alacrity? I don't have a Quiver of Alacrity. I don't run with Quiver of Alacrity because, again, I try to, like, not get too detached from how the regular player experiences stuff. So when I make YouTube videos and guide content, I don't want to like write it from the perspective of being some like out of touch weirdo who doesn't know what people have to go through when they make characters. And so I try not to do stuff like that. It's one of the reasons why I'll usually just run with the Gear's Boots of Dashing, because Gear's Boots of Dashing is very, very achievable for basically every character in the game. Because they're they come from a quest, so there's a one in three chance to get them every time you loot the chest. So, any anyone can literally get them. Um, so it's like, I don't know, seems good. I don't even know which character has it, that's funny. Okay, good. Woo! I was gonna fall down. Anything else? Moon speed. I think mention is another benefit. Yeah, it has a it has a range attack speed as well. True. You could use it to store arrows. Yeah, the quiver will actually can be used as a quiver, um, but only in rare cases. Yeah, I, I've never used a quiver for the purposes of actually storing arrows before. There was a time where I, when I used to play ranged characters all uh, all over, I would get, like, you know, those early quivers, but, yeah. The dynamistic quiver and the purifying quiver are where it's at, anyway. The purifying quiver is basically the most important one. It's okay. Everyone plays their ranged life without using their quiver. That's just how it goes. Which reminds me. Speaking of how it goes. Um, why do I have to do this? Stricken new. I think we're good. We got the bonus. Trap bonus. Oh, I got I got 
extra damage coming in. Oh, is that Omni Spell Stones? That's what I'm talking about. Is that Re Mythic Reaper Wayfinder armor? It's not. Okay. Start prediction. Um, horse from gold roll. Yes. No. This is exceedingly rare. Oh, where are we heading? Okay, so skip depths. Okay. We're taking seven and running three barrel cove. Let's go. Also, what's up, Death ETV Raiders? How you guys doing? Man, you streamed late. Holy crap, dude. Holy crap, Lois. This guy's streaming all the way through the morning. What's up, everybody? How'd you guys how did you do that? How did you stay awake for such an incredibly long time to stream for such an incredibly long time? Genuinely very impressive. I have D door. That's crazy. Yeah, I did not tune into the stream this morning. I was very, very late trying to get my stream up and ready to go. What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome. I will hope you're all having a fantastic morning. Hope you're all feeling good and ready to go and feeling fired up. I'm fired up. I just got Eldritch Blast Cone Shape, which is exciting because I really wanted Eldritch Blast Cone Shape. So what's up, everybody? We're doing a 1 to 30 run today um, because there's a 20%, 25% XP boost. Um, so it's, which might not seem like it's the healthiest thing to do, but hey, since when do I make good decisions? You know what I'm saying? Two Toad Tobias? Absolutely. All right, gotta go zoom. But damn, man, must have been up late. How was the stream? I I missed it, so I don't know if I did. I don't know if there was an event. I apologize. I probably should have been more attentive to that. I did not check Twitch. Usually, I'll check Twitch to see who's streaming before I turn on, but I did not because I was very late trying to get my YouTube video out. Which, if you didn't notice, I did post one about the new free-to-play character builds that are available to many different people because uh, the Warlock, Druid, and Monk are now free-to-play. Anyone can play them. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, well, you should definitely check that shit out. You get access to some free-to-play characters. Also, these are... No, these are fine. I can just drink these Death Ward potions. Hmm, hundreds of Death Ward potions. An opening in the ground reveals go, go, go. Explore. Anyway, the prediction also that I set up is for the uh, horse because we were just talking about how you can get horses from gold rolls. I have never gotten one, and so it just seemed appropriate. Be very upset if I get a horse. Trust me, I'm not going to get a horse. There's a reason why it's 100k on yes. Why would you put 100k on yes? Do you know the odds of this getting a horse? Yeah, the Staff Monk that I've set up is a free-to-play version, so it's a Wood Elf Dexterity-based Staff Monk, which is obviously not the best one. However, free-to-play means no falconry, means Wood Elf Staff Monk. Oh yeah, party favors. Hmm, party favors. There's your hard new raid into your first bow build in about six years. Oh, cool! I also am running a bow build, dude. I hate it. Uh, I I hate it. <laughs> it's level twenty, and it's it's so unfun. I am deeply struggling to enjoy it. So I hope you have a good time with your bow build. But man, every time you just plink away with your bow and the shots just don't exist, like they just disappear into into the ether, um, it makes me want to scream and throw up at the same time. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a time. It's been a time. Let's just say that. But yeah, the how do you like the new raid? I find uh, I'm, I'm actually having a lot of fun with it. It's very very hard. It is it is a fun challenge on elite difficulty. On um, normal and hard, not too bad. Um, hard just requires a little bit more a little bit more damage, I think, than some people are probably used to. Um, and then it takes there's like some very minor amounts of coordination, but other than that, it's pretty good.
Oh, and how did the Elden Ring go? Uh, so I, I have not played Elden Ring since Saturday. I streamed Elden Ring Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I put in about 40 hours in three days, which is an unhealthy thing, and you should not do to yourself. That being said, I did it anyway um, because I wanted to play the game, and it's been going great. Having a lot of fun with Elden Ring. Um, I'm not going to tell you right now that I recommend it in terms of like a general video game. If you like Soulsborne style games that like very hard but very satisfying sense of difficulty, then you will enjoy Elden Ring a lot. Um, yeah, it definitely uh, hits a particular se uh, set of people's tastes. I do not have a ranged weapon. You get which class chooses. So it's based alphabetically and release order. So it's alphabetically and release order. It's great fun. Time for food and sleep. Yo, sounds good, Deathy. Sleep well. You gotta you gotta make sure you get that rest. Because if you don't, um uh something will happen. I don't know what. I I don't get a lot of rest either. But uh yeah, man, you gotta get some sleep and some food. Oh, yeah. Just put yourself into a food coma, which will then turn into a real coma. Mm. Well, not a real coma, but like a, a whole ass whole ass sleep. Just be like a bear. Go eat a bunch of food and hibernate, which you can do here because it's like minus 20 something outside and breezing and there's just snow everywhere. There was literally like a whiteout yesterday because there was so much snow coming down where you couldn't see across the street. Um, and if you, so, sorry, it's alphabetically and then based on release date. So, for example, if I have 10 Barbarian and 10 Bard. Is this old man always playing knick-knack on me? Play knick-knack on yourself, Jesus Christ. <laughs> appear on opposite sides of the it's, it's true. What a guy. Oh, man. Always on you, but never on somebody else. Oh, that's a, that's a funny observation. Um... I got. I keep getting distracted. Brain, go. Fire. Neurons. If you have 10 Barbarian and 10 Bard, you will do a Barbarian past life because Barb is before Bard. But if you have 10 Druid and 10 Fighter, Druid is alphabetically before Fighter. But even though it's alphabetically before Fighter, um, Druid released after Fighter, so therefore you will get the fighter passes. Oh, I forgot I had Dedor. You. Yeah, I forgot I had it. I forgot to put it on my bar. The Weeping Cove is rumored to be a rest oh. place of two toed to buy. Done 84 degrees Fahrenheit with a blistering headache. Ooh, rip. Baby Shark. Yeah, I escaped Baby Shark. I, I'm the youngest of my entire family, and I don't like spending time with children in any capacity, so I have escaped Baby Shark entirely. I'm very fortunate. A lot of those things. Now, which is difficult because I'm at the point where my friends are having children, and um, they're like, oh yeah, kids, they're great. Um... Which is very cool, but I don't know how to... Uh, talk to or deal with or manage children, and so it's just really stressful. I don't like it. Why don't they just allow you to choose which one if you have, if you want if you have edge cases? Very silly. I agree. I think it's because the reincarnation system was a cobbled together mess that needs to get untangled at some point in the future. Good job. Okay. Must go fast. I need more damage. The problem is I skipped a lot of the damage getting going this route. So my character, indivi each individual Elder's Blast does as much damage as I would like. Like, they're still not bad. I also like the fact that I do get actual bonus to movement speed from Feeding Frenzy. So I'm going to try to keep that up most of the time if I can. I do forget sometimes. 
Basically, it's after I use either Stricken or Consume, my character gets additional bonus movement speed equal to my Warlock level. So I get 7% extra movement speed right now, which is pretty good. And it'll last for 20 seconds, with both these spells having a shorter cooldown. So in theory, if I just Leapfrog them, I can make sure it's almost always up. I just target a thing, and then shoot. And then we're good. Doomsaying on the forums will be fantastic. Yes. They're going to ruin the game! The whole video game! I don't have Feather Falling, so pay attention, Strim Tom. I don't know. I find that I don't think there's a single thing that Stainless Steel Games could probably do or release that won't get doomsaying from the, uh, some people. There are definitely some forum members and some members of the crowd that literally they could post anything and it will always get the bleating from the same people. They'll always be upset about whatever it is. Give away free stuff? No. Not good. Release stuff that isn't free? Not good. Game improvements? Not good. Because the problem is, even when there's like no way to really argue about an objective game improvement, it's also difficult because then they go, well, they should have spent their time doing this other thing instead of the thing that they did end up doing. Which is just like, it's just a losing argument because you just, you know, well, I do appreciate what you did, but you did something that isn't the thing that I would have done, so therefore it's now... Uh, it loses much of its value. It's complicated. It is a, it's a hard time to be, like, perpetually angry about everything. Um, definitely an interesting place to be. I gotcha. Yeah, we're good. Performance upgrade? Yeah. I'm hoping that we'll get some larger performance upgrades. Uh, I can't say that I've noticed too much on the back end because um, I haven't played a lot since update 53. So when they made the changes for like, uh, or that they, when they were talking about it, where they're like, oh yeah, they changed how some of the questing process things happen. So I can't confirm or deny whether those changes have had any tangible impact on the gameplay experience. Because for me, they haven't because I've been playing Elden Ring and nothing else. <laughs> But, uh... Okay. Got one of these. Jumpy, jumpy. He's going over there. Get one of these. Whoop! My kids are going to be seven this week. I already stated he just doesn't want any kids. The there you go. I am the only person playing it. Plaza, stop improving the game. Yeah, exactly. Drive people away so I can play it by myself. As the gods intended. Exactly. Yeah, I have no intention of having any kids. So, I apologize. But I have, in fact, en ended... The bloodline ends with me. Whoops. R.I.P. It's how it, it's just how it be sometimes, you know. Right, about time six, get them hopped up on sugar and send them home. Oh yeah, you just bring them over. Hey kids, you kids want some Werther's candies? They're like, oh, yeah, we want some Werther's candies. Then you give them back to the parents. You want these? You want one of these loud toys that takes batteries? Here you go. You send them home? Ha ha ha! Take that, you brats. As you give them back to their parents. Um, sometimes I don't. It's the raid lag that gets me. There's too much raid lag. Most of the time, DDO lag is, like, not really noticeable. It's the... Like, stuff like this I wish didn't happen, where, like, all the monsters just hitched up for a bit on the server. Um, obviously, stuff like that is uh, regrettable, and you'd like to see that not happen. There are lots of other video games that 
don't do that as often. So for example, I've been playing a whole bunch of Lost Ark. There have been performance issues on Lost Ark. I've only had one actual lag issue in my entire playtime. I don't have as many hours logged as other people. Apparently I only have about 36-ish hours in logged in the game, but still I'm working on it. Um, which reminds me, I have to make sure I do my daily login today before I forget. Um, but in raids, it's like, eh, it's intolerable. It's There's no way to get around how bad it is in raids. I'll do all the breakables. My character is very good at breakables. One of my favorite things about playing Cone Lock, you go from not wanting to do breakables to this. If that's true, then what they should do is they should change up DDO raids to have less players in them, and then make the raids, like, compensate for that. There we go. Let's go. I don't bother much my lag. Yeah, the raid lag is just irritating. Just gonna be from the game. Somehow keep me in chat. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, fail teleport happens to me probably once a live stream. It's another also a bit an issue. It's again, it's not like a it's not like a I want to quit the game issue, but it is an issue I wish would get dealt with. Somewhere through the bloodline exists. Oh, I don't care too much about that. This, I have no personal reverence. If I decide at some point I want to have kids in the future, I can just go get some. Just go adopt. You've never had a failed teleport ever? Damn, dude. What's it like? How does it feel? Is like the soda tastes better? What's up, late for work? How are you doing? I gotta finish this coffee real quick because it's been two hours. Mm. Here we go. No, I mean like, instead of 12, make it like 10 people or something. Honestly, I've talked about this before, but like, Dio doesn't need six people for content. If you have a six-person group, there's always one person who's kind of spacing out, not doing a whole lot. Like, that's that's Dio in a nutshell. If you have if you have six-person people content, you really only need five people. Honestly, you probably only really need four for adventures. So if they dumped down group sizes to like five members and uh, ten members, that'd be fine. No, fail teleport as in you hit a loading screen that never unloads. So, uh, failed teleport is not when you fail to teleport. It's failed recovery from teleport. It is a bug that happens where you're supposed to... You click into a zone or an instance. Like, say you go into a tavern. And the tavern is supposed to put you somewhere. But it accidentally puts you somewhere else. So, yeah. The problem is, even though I have the idea where I'm like, yeah, it'd be nice if they shortened it up on the number of people in raids um, and groups, and if that solves a bunch of the lag problems, again, that would make a lot of people upset because people like playing with all their friends. What if you have that many people in a static group? Also, people are like, you're giving us less people in our parties, but you're going to make it just as hard. Re, re, re. Which is like, well, yeah. This, I don't even have an argument against that. That's, that's just probably true. That's how it would work. Yeah. Wonder why the failed teleport thing happens? Well, apparently it's because they have a teleport recovery system where if the game doesn't put you in the right place, it can put you into the right place. Damn, they both walked past the D-door because of the loading screen. A 
small building stands curiously alone in the center of the cove. We're doing puzzle. All right, I can go do this, Greg. Then and that other stuff. If you guys want to do any other things. Looks like when you just ten man raids over, they did it. The ten man raids were just as difficult as the twenty five man. Yes, I don't like forty man raids in WoW. The best example I remember of this was like doing um when I was in Pan I think it was in Pandaria. They like re added molten core. They did like a special event, and if you ran molten core, you got the molten corgi mount and um, all sorts of stuff, and little more molten corgi pet, and it was fun. It was a fun. It was a fun thing to do, um, but also it was like irritating because uh, the raid was just not very fun. You'd have like half your half the people standing around not doing anything, even though you're like pulling them in to like just all kind of run it as a group. Obviously, Molten Core is a bad example because Molten Core is not the most fun raid ever, where each boss has one mechanic or less. Or <laughs> sometimes the bosses are just big monsters <laughs> with no mechanics on them. Uh, early WoW raids. But wow, classic's like really good, you guys. Wow. Um. Anyway, I, I shouldn't just shit on wow classic. But yeah, 40, 40 person raids too many. It's one of the reasons why I really like in Final Fantasy fourteen how they have less people per raid. Because we because mythic is twenty, I think in wow. Twenty man raids, so it's like ten and twenty. Is it twenty, ten, twenty or twenty five? I don't even remember. I used to do this if you can believe it. And we always had better success when we cut out players. The fewer players you have, the more successful you are, because you need to have fewer people making... Like, if it's one person makes a mistake and the raid is over, and you need, like, 20 people to do it versus 10, yeah. To do anything? I don't even know. Dude, it's hard enough to get five people to come to D&D. &D. I, I ran my D&D &D group the first time in a month because... Um, People just kept not being available, and I was like, okay, I don't care if you're not here, we're doing D&D, &D, so show up. Why do you have so many hit points, Scrag? Yep. Hey, what's up, Arcaniverse? How are you doing? Right, so there's a concept that I think a lot of people that aren't familiar with um, data centers and data services is that just because you are lagging in your experience doesn't mean the experience is caused by something you are doing, if that makes sense. So every instance is not in a box. The like, So imagine an instance is a box, right? Well, the box is inside the house and the house is the whole server cluster. So, or like instant server kind of like machine. So it's like the all the boxes are in the house. So your box is in this house. So if somebody else is playing really loud music, that's gonna affect you because you're still in the house, if that makes sense. So just because you're soloing a raid doesn't mean that you will have less lag. You are might be creating less lag. Um, but yeah, that will be uh, a problem there. So if there are other people who are also running raids and they have full groups, that will also affect the same thing. They'll also kind of all come together. You have freed Barrier Warley from the ancient prison. There we go. Let's get out of here. I think some people miss out on that one. So it's like, obviously, there's no catch-all for any of these situations because lag and computers and stuff like that is complicated. But... Um, Reducing the overall amount of stress on the server alleviates it for everybody. Forty man is awesome for practicality. It doesn't work exactly. I love the idea of a forty man rage. It doesn't work. I want to get up there in Lost Ark. I am going to. I'm committing to playing more Lost Ark. Is Warlock still the best to Zerg from one to twenty? Um. Warlock hasn't been the best to Zerg to 1 to 20 in a long time. Um, probably since its release. I would still say that Sorcerer is going to be your fastest bet. The thing about Warlock is I don't really... My damage is just coming online now at like level 7, which is taking some time, obviously. 
has an effect on it. So we're going. Two hours, 15, and we're almost level 8. Damn, man. Oh, what's after um, Fire Caves 1 and 2? From the cave entrance before you. So, I would not super recommend Warlock for going fast. Like, or sorry, going the fastest. It's good for going fast, but it's not the fastest. There are other things that are faster than Warlock. Get the job done in a quicker capacity. I also don't have my sprint boost yet. Ugh, but I want it. Just had to get Cone. Or else I would have sprint boost and wouldn't be able to do anything. I'd just walk around and be like, yee, sliding around the world doing nothing. The altar of the dragon below lies ahead. And down we go. Oh, Bard is so good. It's really simple, and it is also very fast, especially because you can get the movement speed now. Um... There was a bug which caused the swashbuckler room suit to drop on death that has been patched, so it's a lot nicer. Yeah. Bonus to loot for each person under the max in a raid might be the answer. Maybe. I don't know. Reaper wings? Yeah. We all got the Reaper wings. This is a fast group. You gotta have wings. They make you more aerodynamic. We've talked about this before when it comes to, like, aerodynamics of different things. But, yeah. Um, it's important to have your wings so your character can be more aerodynamic in general. And move quicker through the air. This ogre is fast as hell, though. He gets stunned and dies. Must go quick. Quick like bunny. So, 1 minute 53 second fire caves with 31,000 XP. Mm. From the cave entrance before now we just wait for part 2 to get got. It describes how quickly you should expect a system to break down. Ah, I see. Go. In. Here we go. Got a zoom, man. We gotta go fast. When we level up, I'm gonna be able to spend eight points, which gives me exactly enough for a sprint boost, which is sick. All right, I gotta get move speed. Keeping my move speed up with beating frenzy is something I don't often just maintain because I'm usually casting it regularly, but doing it here is a lot more intensive on my brain. Or that if everyone is good, it's likely someone will fuck up. Yes, that is correct. If the more people you have, the more mistakes that are going to be made. 100%. It has nothing to do with, like, that you... even Like, there is also a higher chance that you might have people who aren't as good. But if you're doing proper screening, everyone is going to be good. But everybody makes mistakes. Like, it doesn't matter what it is you're doing or how good you are at your job. You are going to make a mistake. Other people are going to make a mistake. Making mistakes is an unavoidable part of being... A human person in three-dimensional space um all the time oh no you you go outside to get the car and you go reach in your pocket i left my keys in the house you know or you accidentally burn some food that you're making because you were distracted by something that came up everybody makes mistakes and so when you have more people you have more odds for mistakes to happen especially if the things are as strict in the two-dimensional space? In the two-dimensional space, you, it's harder to make mistakes. It's true. It is more difficult to make mistakes in the two-dimensional space. Again, we're talking about the three-dimensional space, though, because that's the, the thing that I am kind of more versed in. Must. Accelerate. Catch. Fast. Dwarf. Dwarf so fast. Zoom. Waves of baking heat wash up the tunnel, and with them, a hate so pure. 
Got it. And dimension door, and we out. Alright, and now we're doing Necro 1, apparently. What about in Hilbert's space? In Hilbert's space? What's Hilbert's space? Is this science Hilbert space? In mathematics, Hilbert space allows generalizing the methods of linear algebra and calculus from the finite dimensions of Euclidean spaces to spaces that may not have finite dimension. Oh, I missed this math. Um, a Hilbert space is a vector space equipped with an inner product, which allows defining a distance function so that it becomes a complete metric space. They serve as a first template for extending differential and integral calculus as normally done in Rn, though this can be done more generally using normed spaces. So, it's important to note that math is hard, okay? And if you're not familiar with math, um, it, it, even if you are, it's hard. So if you're ever like, you know, doing stuff in math or something, you're like, man, I find this stuff confusing. Don't worry. Everybody finds it confusing. It's okay. Like two hours? I literally you never got your ship buffs? I always get my ship buffs, that's the first thing. No, I, I understand the concept. It's just it's the it's just, it's it's kind of funny to think about how like when you explain basic concepts of math a lot of people don't understand like some of the proofs and things that go into something and the different types of approximations that get made immortal heart burning heart immortal heart is this fire lock build this is fire warlock build yeah Uh, which one are we starting with? Earning. Okay. But it's yard one? Correct. Well, it's the it's the same thing. So I reincarnated as the exactly the same character, down to the face than everything else. Oh, also, this is I don't know if horse we were talking about this. This is the celestial Avenger armor and how it looks. I don't know if this is like interesting to you or like this is the armor set you're looking for. It's kind of celestial adjacent because it's got like some wings on it. It's not the same thing. It's not gold, but it's got like red gemstones. Um, this is, I believe, the breastplate. Oh, no, this is the plate mail. This is the heavy plate. It's weird that it has these like breaks in the arms. I don't know if the male character models also have that one. Um, but the rest of it looks pretty good. Research for the guild. Ooh, research for the guild. I have to log in and do that. I might do that here when we do like a quick five minute break. Which reminds me, this. Here we go. Zuriat Armor Cosmetic from Rem Turnins. That one's also very, very good. It does. It takes Lost Ark many, many minutes to load up. That's why when we get close to a break, I'm going to press the button to load it up and then uh, do, do it from there. I don't know why Lost Ark takes so long to load. Although, to be fair, once you get in the game, I find the load screens are like lightning fast. So it's not that bad. But yeah, it, it definitely does take a while for the game to get started up. I'm being chased by a Reaper. I don't like it. Is it a dangerous reaper? Uh, it's kind of a dangerous reaper. It's a plague. And away we go. Sorry, I don't have sprint boost yet. Next level. And they just stack all the loading up front, which makes sense. That's a great idea. Like, it sucks because then you're like, oh man, it takes so long to load into the game, but then once you get in, you don't have to worry about most of those things. Loading a bunch, just a bunch of stuff into memory. I think it's one of the issues that DDO has, is that it basically just doesn't load anything ahead of time. It always loads stuff, like, when you are doing it. It'll be like, oh, you're using this effect? I will load it now. 
I feel like there's very little preloading in DDO. Oh, the quest is already over. Well, it's a dimension door for me. Alright, which one next? Crimson, crimson, crimson. Yeah, me either. Uh, when do you think you'll do the gold roll? Oh, I should do it now. Is it? It's been half an hour, right? It's been half an hour. It's been half an hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. One point seven million on no. Oh my god! I didn't realize there was that many flasks in the pool. Yeah, let me do the roll. Don't trap me. Don't trap me. All right. I've never had this many flasks in a in a prediction ever. Holy crap. Well, that's exciting. They just toast that reaper in one hit. Heck yeah. Toasty. All right. Does Stream Tam get a horse? If I get a horse, some people are going to be very happy. I got two on right side. All right, three, two, one. A hundred? I literally rolled a hundred and got black caneth medium armor. Oh my God. I got the 100. I just didn't get the horse. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh my god. What? That's insane. What a scam. You guys got scammed. Straight the hell up. I told you. I've never gotten a horse. Oh my god. Scammed. 100% scammed. I got the last one. Right side also. Oh my god, that's unbelievable. I can't believe I just rolled a 100. Oh my god. No, I don't want to hit the flaming spheres. Stop eating my spells, you bastards. Oh, whatever. I'm detouring out of this. There we go. <laughs> how? How? Oh my god. Straight up scammed. What does the armor look like? I don't know. It's it's in the DDO store. It's one of the ones you can get for like like 400 points or something. It looks like this. So, this is the way it looks. It's got like the canvas skirt and then it's not a bad looking piece of armor actually. It's pretty cool. I guess I'll wear it. Sanguine, 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 sanguine. Oh my god, did you do it? Holy shit. The flex on chant, dude. That's astounding. He's got the one million. You guys just got flexed. Also, what's up, Sojak Raiders? How you guys doing? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good day. Um, What's up, everybody? Hope you're doing fantastic. That's amazing. Okay, I gotta, I gotta, I did not expect that to happen here, where I'm taking basically no breaks to do any management of this live stream activity, which means I am going to try to do a few things here at the same time. Do some multi, some mild multitasking. Got another one. Two vessels of faith. Okay, I'm gonna go up here. Woo! Anyway, what's up, Pikachu Nia? How are you doing? How's everybody doing today? Silver rolled out? Yeah, give me a minute here. There's a lot of Mon stars. Go away, monsters. I'm busy. See ya. And now the last one's Immortal. Oh, okay. 
Let me get this in here. And then I'll have to get the flex uh, sorted out. But what's up, everybody? Hope you're all doing well. Hope everyone's having a good day. Um, if you just missed it, I had a prediction going as to whether I was going to pull a horse from my daily gold roll. It's important to note that I have never pulled any mount from any of the daily rolls. Or ever. I've never pulled a mount. Um, and the odds of pulling a mount, you need to get a 98 or higher to be able to get on the, anything that will roll a mount. At least 97 or 98 or higher. Um, so the odds of even just getting the roll are low. And then there's a whole bunch of things on the list. So I was like, haha, it'll be funny. The odds are extremely low. Probably like 1 in 700 or like 800 or even lower than that. So then I immediately go and roll the 100 on my gold roll and scam everybody because I did not pull them out. I, instead, I got this armor piece and a plus 5 heart of wood. Now, for me, the plus 5 heart of wood is an awesome reward and way better than the mount, but it is straight up scammed. Sorry, you guys. Have a good stream. Oh, nice. Yeah, dude. Get some rest. I hope your stream was well. I hope you're feeling good. And uh, yeah, you got to rest it out. Uh, I can't move. Go, go. I got to get out of here. I'm too slow. Soon I'll have access to heal scrolls, which will be great. Attack, please. Oh, I have a wand in my hand. And I turned off my... I hit the wrong keys. I don't know how to play this game. This game is hard. What armor? This armor here. This is the black Kenneth medium armor. I need a bathroom break for the bloody crypt. All right, and now we are taking level eight. Don't do the predictions. It's just a recursive tax and a casino and Strim is taking all your hard-earned flasks. Mmm, panacea pots, eh? Mm -mm -mm. Uh, do I have a thing here for this? Good. Good. Woo. All right, later, Bertle. Enjoy your errands. Have a good time. Before you head back out on the road. Oh, yeah, right. The road life. I guess you must have, like, a good data plan. You just slap on a stream and just kind of listen to it in the background. It's not bad. It's just different than listening to talk radio, I guess. You go ahead and listen to some guys talk about something on the road. You just listen to some regular radio, music. This isn't Top 40, but Top 40 would get exhausting after a while. As somebody who used to live in my car, it was it definitely gets exhausting. As well. Need more sleep. Later, Lord Zevon. Get some rest before you have to go get into work. One hour, two hour, three hour. As long as you need. Um, Warlock feet. Fiendish resilience. Invisibility. Which has good value. Uh, points. I get hit. sprint boost. Um, web or inhuman nature. I'm going to go with web for now because we're going to go up into strong pact for more damage. Um, and then we're going back over to Bloody Crypt, and I'm going to use the washroom. Uh, does Sork or Druid make a better elemental nuker? Or do we have to break party and reform? Okay. Um, does Sork or Druid make a better elemental nuker? The answer is Sorcerer, however, in terms of damage, and probably Druid in terms of utility on top of damage, because Tsunami is disgusting. I'm driving a Bluetooth while cruising down the road. Later, boss. And no, I have not always played on Arganesson. I started playing this game on Lazar back when the game first released. Um, then I played on Kyber for a bit. Then I ended up playing on Galanda until 2016-ish. And then in 2016, I transferred to Arganesson. I've been playing on Argo ever since. Was it really 100? I literally got 100. I rolled 100. I, I don't know how. I just, I did. And I got this armor piece. I'm happy. I'm a happy gamber. Uh, I need sprint boost on my actual track here, though. Sprint boost. I have my, do I have my falcon summon? Yeah, I haven't died yet. We're good. Also, picking up 15 healing amp is just nice. Because my character only, I don't have any healing amplification items. I will later. But not currently. I'm also not wearing armor yet. Let's go. Maybe 
we go. Get out of here, Reapers. This also, level 8 is huge. It gives you one packed dice and one base damage dice. So level 8 is big for Warlock. It's a huge up uh, increase in damage. Considering this goes from 2 base damage to 3 base damage. Oh my god. Oh my god. Die. Get e and then easy mode begins. E well, I'm already on easy mode, but... Let's, let's go... And now I have sprint boost. Oh, ha, ha, ha. I just blast him as I go past him. And I will go this way, because this one's a little bit longer. Is it a baby core with Evards? Yes. Oh, like, you know, the term baby core obviously is, is meant to be rude and mean. Um, but unfortunately, Evards tentacles literally does turn the game into baby core. Yeah, that's how that works. <laughs> it's it's very easy to play the game when you have Evards. Uh, is there an optional here? There is an optional here. I guess the leper. Goodbye, bad guys. It also gets, grants the ghoul exterminator for killing some of these extra ghouls, so keep that in mind. Scoundrel warlock. Ooh. I mean, you can't really go wrong with Warlock. I've mentioned this before. Uh, Warlock is like one of my favorite classes, and it's very, very good. So I'm a big, big fan. You could say I'm something of a Warlock fan. Nope, wrong way. Not a big paying attention to where I'm going kind of fan. You missed the stream, but I posted about it in Discord. And also, if you ding that bell for notifications here on Twitch and follow, you can make sure that you never miss a single one. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. It's a great way to go about it. Hmm. Built-in features for finding content. Away from reality? Oh, yeah. That makes sense. It happens. I've been there. We all have to step away sometimes to focus on other things. You know, sometimes you just have to take a step into the ethereal, or like, you know, into the astral plane to kind of recollect your mind and your thoughts. Uh, let's do dim door for good. No bot. Two bard, 18 warlocks, since you don't have a heart? Yeah. You can swashbuckle if you're an enlightened spirit warlock, but then you don't wear medium armor. And it depends on if you're like, if you really want to be melee. If you want to be melee, then it's not bad, but it depends. If you're not being a melee warlock, but just kind of doing the area of effect pew 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 damage, you just like kind of get the aura and blast people. I am oaring nothing because I'm all blast all the time. Hmm. Got a strong pact here, which is exciting. More damage soon. And I think I'm probably literally just going up to Tainted Scholar and maybe not grabbing the tier 5 Eldritch Wave for a while. I think I'm just going to go and get all the pact damage. So it's more just damage per attack. Because this is really, really good. Because um, I don't necessarily need Eldritch Wave. I have acquired the Lemon Girl Scout cookies. Ooh, lemon? That sounds good. Eldritch Wave is better than Ball? 100%. Ball hits once. Wave hits three times. Yep. Eldritch Wave goes one, two, three in the full hits. Ball has a cost... And uh, also, I think it has a shorter cooldown, too. Uh, yeah, it has a shorter cooldown. The cost isn't really that big of a deal for the depravity, but because uh, you're you're pretty much always maxed out on depravity. Uh, 
cosmetic dupes from those roles? Of course. There's no guarantee on what you get. The game doesn't have some type of, like, um, pity timer on the type of uh, stuff you get from it. Well, the cosmetics aren't, like, unique to your account, right? So... Na, 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 na. We'll find this. The stones at the stones at your Got it. Are worn smooth. How did you get stop sprinting everywhere, you bastard? Black prophet falls. His body turning to ash on the ground. Uh Dedor. See ya. You trade it? Uh, no, you can't trade it with other players. It is, it's bound to account, but you can pass it from one character to another. I would, I would prefer if there was just a system where once you unlocked one thing, you were good, but yeah. Um, where are we going? I was not listening. Oh, the 12s, okay. We're doing all of them, or? Okay. Is the is this the only way of getting them? No, you can get in the store. I'm pretty sure. Caneth? Let me see. Black Caneth. Heavy armor, medium armor with Star Curus. Scroll pack. Oh, this might actually be the only way to get this one. So this might be a roll exclusive cosmetic. Oh, dang it. Let me see here. Um black. And it's, um, so I've got the heavy armor with star cuirass. So this is, sorry, this is black with medium armor, and this is with the star cuirass. So I can get the, the more, um, so I can get it with, like, the extra pauldrons and, like, some of the extra detail, which honestly looks way better. Oh, wow, this looks way better. Oh, my God. <laughs> this one looks so much better. Oh, yes, and the glamour smith. I forgot about that. Okay, this, damn. Anyway. Um, there is, I forgot about that. There's the Glamour Smith. So in the basement of the Hall of Heroes, you can take co old cosmetics and you can trade them in for, um, for Glamour Dust, which you can then trade in for different cosmetics if you want. I completely forgot about the entire system, yes. I'll do the maze. These things are immune to fire. Forgot about that. Dio seems to have a power creep problem. What's the problem? A warforge stands on an island surrounded by bubbling acid. Oddly enough, uh, this way, this way. Embedded in its chest, the walls shimmer softly, then fade into invisibility. I remember the the way you get through this. The thing left visible is the lever in the center of the room. Okay, so that's good. Green crystal mounted in the chest of the wall. Yeah, there's opening the green puzzle layer. here. Must go past invisible walls. If you wonder what I'm doing, I'm, there's an invisible maze that I'm currently in the process of running through, and I don't entirely remember the route through here. There's an ooze that kind of shows you the direction that you're supposed to take, which makes it easier. There we go. We're good. Whoop. Pulling the lever and the monk is actually fun. Monk is great. It's really fun. Especially Staff Monk right now. I think a lot of people have slept on Staff Monk for just too long. For too long, people have slept on the Staff Monk. Not realizing how good it is. Yeah, the pets are also good for that because they just sprint through the maze. But you have to stand. I go through it really quick. Pulling the lever dims the red crystal on the wall. The red barrier has been opened. The final crystal goes dark, and the last barrier fades away. Now, to get to the bottom of the by opulent officer, I have no need of fighting the... the large doors is 
a disorganized but functional nope. wizard's workshop. Objects and creatures are scattered around, transmuted into shining platinum. I'm trying my best to kill everything as we go, but these monsters have so many hit points, and my damage is not high enough yet. I need more scaling. There's a staff monk. It's really fun. Yeah, I like I like staff monk. Um, this goes here, here, here. Twisty, twisty. When scariest quest on hardcore, opulent officers do crazy damage. They do, especially if you happen to be lawful, because they cast Chaos Hammer, which hurts a lot. And dealing with Chaos Hammer is not okay. I hate Chaos Hammer. It is so saddening to deal with, because you just blow up. Granted, I don't really play a lot of char lawful characters, but still. We're not doing too bad. Able to take level 9 now. It's been 2 hours and 49 minutes. So our pace feels like it should be pretty good. Hmm. Did any of you guys just get an admin message? The glowing sigil fades. The orange lock has hmm. been open. The three arcane locks are now open. It just says admin view DID. The complex as the passage to the madman in charge opens. The renegade transmuter. Hey, it's interesting. Unless there's somebody knows something I don't know and I have access to an admin client, somebody is watching me. But the wizard now vows to destroy the entire city. There must be a way hmm. to They're nerfing my damage live, probably. The admin message is from viewing the cosmetic the from the shop. Oh, that's it. It's from viewing the cosmetic from the shop. There we go. Perfect. That makes complete sense. Yeah, because I clicked it. I just never read chat. <laughs> so it's been there for minutes. <laughs> uh, that's good. And now we're going to do everybody's favorite quest. Um, Price of Freedom. Now, I know you guys love the Price of Freedom because it's really fast and easy. That's what most people talk about. When they talk about the Price of Freedom, they go, man, I love the Price of Freedom because of how fast and easy it is. Give me the wand. Oh, my God. Why was it so hard? Is it because I'm bad? Character to jump. I don't know how I, but I keep somehow throwing them directly under my feet. Uh, down here. Oh, I have gravity pushing me back. That's a weird problem. I have backwards momentum. But I have to hold forward and I'm still sliding back. Which here is very, very frustrating. There we go. Now I have forward momentum, which is an odd pro and similar problem. Okay, that I got slid on the roof, so I got more momentum. Oh god. Okay, we're good. Take this, officer. Okay, we're good. Yeah, Paladin's amazing. It's such a good class. Uh, no. There's no reason to have any alignments unless you have an alignment restriction. Basically, your alignment should always be neutral unless you either playing as a Paladin, which you need to be lawful good, or um, you need to be a Monk, which needs to be lawful. Outside of that, you should be neutral. Because being uh, anything other than neutral means you're subject to many different dangerous effects from monsters, which is obviously not ideal. She's immune to fire, which I love. Yeah, it's kitchen. 
inevitable punishment is death. Just ahead, do price of freedom. The quest is so hard. Yeah, exactly, hundred percent. Once you figure it out, some of the some of the small details. It's not bad. No, stop knocking me down, you bastards! I like just strip away the fire immunity off of the boss, who I can't damage. God, I hate genies. Why do they? Why would they have a room with like six of them? What's the What's the point of this? What's the point of this? Whose idea was this? Who did this? You know what I'm saying? God, the genie, they're just the worst monster type in DDO. Um, actually, you know what? Now that I say that, I'm thinking about other monster types that I also find very irritating. Like bats and phase spiders. Hmm. So phase bat genies. That's what we're talking about right now, right? Phase bat genies. Hmm. Just make the game worse. Uh oh, freeze. I don't know why the DDO freezes, um, but that's that started to happen to me like semi recently. I don't know if it happens to you guys as well. Oh, um, I'm gonna go kill these guys for extra XP. Open the DDO so I don't have to jump. I don't mind it. I think it's fun. It's a unique little thing. Well, whoa, whoa! I got my momentum push to nowhere land. Here we go. Oh, Babs, doing newer content. Yeah, after the last big, it, it I think it was like update fifty. It was like fifty-two point something. Um, not fifty-two entirely, but it was fifty-two point something. I was going to freeze up. But did we not find Talbron? I didn't. Yep. Uh, Tal Talibron. Talibron, he's here. Right here. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I can't see. Oh, I can't zoom. I've got that zoom bug where you c I can't change my camera angles or anything, which is really annoying. You guys, you guys know the, you guys know the zoom bug. Hey, yeah, it's a guy who's immune to fire. Guess what? He takes fire damage anyway. Cause I'm a tiefling. Ha 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 ha. I just wish the fire immunity lasted longer than like two seconds. That'd be good. Nothing. You don't need more Yuan-T? Um, they could use more yuan to. They could use more Salamanders, too. I think they're both cool monsters. Salamanders are one of those things that I remember fighting very early in the game. Um, like, in some of my, like, earlier experiences playing Dungeons & Dragons Online for the first time. Or not Dungeons, sorry, not Dungeons & Dragons Online, but Dungeons & Dragons in general. What? Get? How did I uh, somehow equip that? If it's not for DDO load times, mm, no, it's not going to affect DDO load times. You're never going to get any um, any fast load times out of DDO. Red and blues. Oh, red willow. Sorry, I got it. Right and slow. It's a good name. Um. Oh man, we're like banking each level, so I'm like, oh, I want to spend more points, but I can't. It's like you level up, spend your points, and then that's it. Uh, Jurasco. You're doing Red Willow. And I have Dimension Door, which makes this fast. Fast, fast, fast. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't load that slow? Not for me, no. I mean, it has these loading screens. Patrolling monsters have trampled 
It'd be nice if there was no loading screens, but yeah. Five haggard looking halflings can be spied through the Red Willow. An important missive has been handed over to your party. Somewhere in the jungle, a dark emissary awaits. Move fast. Move fast. Uh, fire damage. Fire damage. Fire damage. Okay, we're good. Go by faster. The faster you can load assets from your drives. Probably? Like, yeah, obviously having a faster drive will help DDO load faster. I'm just saying the largest impact that on DDO's loading experience is definitely going to be the development staff improving and optimizing the code underneath the hood more than anything else. Bugbear and hobgoblin assassins peer hungrily from the dark corners of the jungle. Okay. Hobgoblins have created a small warren. I'm running. Spinny distro and SSD was a night and day difference in load times. True, yeah. DDO do be loading, especially on a uh, a drive like that. Okay, good. There we go. Oh, I'm I'm sure the problem is like I'm sure a lot of these issues will get fixed because they're talking more openly about the problems that they have and what they're doing to fix it. But the main issue is that like just because they're like yeah we want to fix this problem doesn't mean that problem is going to get fixed. Oh, these guys, the hill giant hunters are immune to fire. I love that. I forgot that was a mechanic in this game. Hmm. 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 But does your lands, uh, does your soul ache to travel to the lands between? Yes, it does. I would like to be playing uh, the Elden Ring right now. Mm, Illidan Ring. Oh, boozled. Got him. Got him. Uh, I. Sorry, it's one of my favorite things to do in this game. That's uh, We call that the D-Door Bamboozle. And the idea is that uh, Dimension Door... Oh, I forgot to talk to the guy. Can you share? I forgot to talk to the guy. Um, When you cast Dimension Door, usually it's to bring you to the beginning of the quest. Because then you can just click the door of the quest to leave it instantaneously instead of having to recall. But some quests don't have doors at the beginning that take you out of them. There's no, like, rope out of the tunnel or something else. It's, it's just no way to leave other than recalling. And uh, <laughs> the old D-door bamboozle gets them every time. Just drop the D-door. No. No. Oops. You can't climb there. The holy symbols of the sovereign host adorn the walls around you. This place was once hallowed. There we go. You don't get this one. Watch people get in the circle and click it. Um, oh, I'm not gonna do that. That would that would tank my own experience. Very mild trolling of somebody else. So they have they they we all have to recall, but they don't realize it, and they have to like they go wait a minute, and then they recall. In my opinion, is very harmless prank. Like when when the the maximum harm of a prank is less than ten seconds and a wait a second, then that's an acceptable prank. Sure. Zero harm is the feeling of betrayal. Yes, one hundred percent. Look, I can't help it. Sometimes you gotta betray people for the laughs. 
Look, dude, I love to laugh. At sometimes the misfortune of others, but that's just the way it is. And did I cause that misfortune? Yes. Hmm. Like when they have the expression where it's like, who's laughing now? Me. It's me who's laughing now. I am laughing now. Damn. Normally I would zoom in so I could see the bones, but I can't zoom in right now to see the bones. Oh god. Okay, come on, brain. Mm, I really thought I didn't hit anything. Very annoying. Okay, we're good. Oh, happy Monday to you, Hypocalypse. How you doing? I'm having a good Monday. It's only 12 o'clock? Oh my god. Bio Man Death Guard, gotta go. See ya. Wouldn't wanna be ya. Skip combat by bone hopping? Correct. So the doors only lock when you touch the bones on the ground. So if you don't touch the bones, the doors don't lock. That's how that's how that works. It's basically you're disturbing the dead, so then they come to fight you. Um, so if you just jump over each bone pile, you can get through that entire section without fighting a single monster. Usually I would zoom in so I could see it and uh, jump over all of them. Oh, okay. Now this makes more sense. Yeah, no, no, no. yeah. Because I was like, I don't know who Kaipocalypse is. I feel like I would recognize that name. So that's why usually sometimes I'll see people type their names in chat. And I'm like, who are you? But then you can change them. Like how this, you know, and other times it's weird when you see people try to like imitate others. Like I've talked about this before, but there's this Arcanaverse guy that straight up just tries to pretend to be Tom Kapoor. And it's so funny to me. Like, bro, do your own thing. Tried the cube. Yeah, I looked at the cube. It looks really fun. Like the concept of a progressively more challenging dungeon. I love that idea. I wish we had something like that in DDO. But then I would complain about lag, so I don't know. Maybe I don't. Yeah. Arcane Initiate for plus one to all spell DCs. And Warlock Pack Fire Shield. Oh, yeah. Leave party. And now we're resetting client. We're gathering resources for more guild XP. Perfect. I can't wait to do it. Uh, I will. I will log in. In fact, I could probably just do that now on the back end. Just log in and do it. You know what's the best? Okay, 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 okay. I have to show this off. I have to show this off, bro. What is this? Look at this. Steam Deck is here. Elden Ring, bro. You cannot play the Elden Ring on a Steam Deck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When computers that are like literally made with like space age materials are struggling to run some aspects of Elden Ring, you are not playing Elden Ring on your Steam Deck. Ridiculous. Image 30 FPS. Oh, that's playable. The problem is when it comes to um, when it comes to games like this, uh, like Elden Ring. So action games, the amount of frames that you have available determines how you can react to stuff, which is also difficult. Oh shit! I'm not logging in. Um, uh, my game is crashing. Give me a sec. Come on, please let me in DDO. Let me play. The old can't log in trick. I love that. Uh-oh. 
Oh well, at least I can do my, my login in Lost Ark while I'm waiting for my game to clear up my connection. I really hope it doesn't kick me out of the game. I've had this happen before where sometimes you try to log in and then the game won't let you log in, but then your character's like basically just stuck in the world and you can't play for like 30 minutes. That happened to me once. The first time I did a 24-hour live stream, I, um, I like logged out and then tried to log in and it uh, did not work. And I couldn't play for over an hour. And so I ended up doing stuff like Loading Screen Simulator. I'd show off what I have going on in Lost Ark, but I'm literally just logging in and clicking all the buttons. Do you run pretty fast duo since you can split it? No, not yet. Hold connection. Damn it. All right, go. Speed run. Click this. Go here. Alt U. Here you go. Have my donation. Boom. Support the research. Boom. Support. And... Can I log into DDO yet? Nope. Oh, DDO, please let me in the game. Why is it stuck here like this? Yeah, just do my chaos dungeons. Yeah. Oh, I haven't disconnected yet in game. Oh, I'm out. I am now logging in. And that's everything I needed to do. Done. Whew. Log in, please. Beautiful. Love to run Chaos Dungeons with you. I would love to get to the point where I can do that. I cannot, but I would like to. I would like to get there, so I can. Uh, okay. Um, I will do this. More temp HPs. I don't think I have any items for level 9. No, I don't. The only items I have for 10 are these two daggers. So that's it. Um, good. Gas damage simply by after reaching Vern. Well, I'm not there yet. Does Steam Deck have the option to stream from PC? I have no idea. Good question. Um, oh, where are we running? Galeris 234. Okay. I'm just going to find the Flight Foot Greaves, because I have them here. It gives me freedom of movement, which is very convenient for the leveling process. Yeah, I haven't done any of that stuff, so I will when I get there. I'm just uh, a bit behind because of the unfortunate release of Elden Ring. The thing is, right now, it's like February, March is going to be full of games, and I've talked about this before, but April is going to be the most boringest month in the planet because all of the games are over. You've got, you know, Guild Wars is also coming out, the expansion released today, so really exciting. People are playing the Guild Wars expansion. It's going to be awesome. But then it's going to be a month away from that. I feel like April is going to be like a dead month for games. Granted, if you're like a regular person and you don't play eight hours of video games a day, then maybe you'll be able to just catch up on all these other games. But yeah. Yeah, Elden Ring, very fun. Yeah, I'm running over. I, oh, I don't think I can make the jump. Maybe. Uh, don't kill the ads on the floor. Then, when we go into that room, I need them. Okay, I think we're good. Oh, I forgot to grab my um, Omni spell dust. Uh, underwater? Sure. Yeah. 
Guardian raids are more of a pain to matchmake. Mm. Is a Guardian raid a raid, or is that something different? There we go. Oh, I gotta hit this one first. I was not paying attention. This one. I, I can get it. If you want to just tap A for me twice, that'd be good. Basically, Monster Hunter? Mm. So it's like world bosses? I'm just going to D-door out of here. Marion Executioner. One, two, and he's going to die to my bleed, so I don't need to kill it. Although, I do need to climb this. Oh, really? Fear Reaper? Love that. Okay, he's dead. Let me go up here. Kill this guy. Is he a Blackbone? No, he's not. He just looks like one. See ya! I'm against Team of Four, go to Big Monster Boy. That's kind of cool. Oh, so is that when you got grabbed by that big beast and basically murdered? That's what, I, that's what that Guardian raid was? When you posted that clip? Okay, cool. Yeah, just trying to learn all them terminologies. Okay, now we hit him with a bell. Crack the door. Here we go. Hey, what's up, Pierce? How are you doing today? We're trying to go fast. It can be difficult when there's so many monsters in the way. We can also pick up all the optionals as we go through this. Okay, cool. We're basically done now. Oh, I can use heal scrolls now? And have 130%? Well, goodbye wand. Hello, heal scroll. Sweet. Yeah, I'm on heal scrolls now. One of my favorite things about being a warlock with a racial completionist is being level 9 with 45 UMT. <laughs> so I, um... When it comes to use magic device, this character had... 31 at level 2, which was hilarious. During the entire 16th anniversary celebration, Uber Archer, that's not correct. I need to correct you now. It's not free during the VIP celebration. It's free daily gold rolls until the end of the calendar year. So until 2022 becomes 2023, it's VIP gold rolls. Which is important to note. Well, it's not free. You pay for it. But, uh... That gold rolls are insane value. A lot of people are upset about what they were going to do about VIP since they're you know giving away free classes and races and other stuff. Um, you have to understand that the VIP bonus is absolutely gigantic. It's huge. The uh, gold roll is disgusting. It's so much value. It's way better than most of the things you're going to get. No, I didn't do the silver roll. Uh, so. Silver roll. A lot of people voted low, and you were right. I got 100 on my gold, so might as well go low on here. Oh, no. No, no, no. Angles. Camera angles are hard. Okay, we're good. A bright flame flares upwards as the first soul lock is open. 
the Lyra will be released. Here we go. This acceleration is going for the entire year. Uh, sort of. The anniversary event is going to end in, like, two weeks. Um, so if you want to get your anniversary stuff, you want to get the cosmetics, you want to get any of the weapons and the items, or your cookies, all these other things, you do have to make sure you get them, like, in the next two weeks, or else you can't get them. So if you want your Steel Star coffees, um, again, you have, like, two weeks, so make sure you go get them now. Don't think you can get it the entire year. It's going to end soon. Tiefling Fiend Warlock with Ash? Yep, that's correct. The celebration does not last the entire year. The, the the genie will be here the whole year, and the gold rolls will be here the whole year, but the XP bonus is going away today, or like tomorrow, and um, the other stuff that we were talking about, the uh, like the actual anniversary event and the party favors and all that, that's not going to last forever. The gold roll is fantastic, and it lasts the entire calendar year. If you're somebody like me, who's just always a VIP anyway, because I don't like buying content packs, I'm just I'm not somebody who likes buying things a la carte. I'd rather just have the subscription that I pay for, where I get all of it. I know that in theory, some people are like, yeah, but you know, once you've bought it all, you don't have to spend any more money. But like, if I stop playing, I just turn off the VIP, and then when I start playing again, I do the VIP. The benefit for me is that I'm only paying for stuff that I'm actually playing, if that makes sense. Um, Oh, right, you guys jump. Uh, Evocation-based? Or pick up Necromancy on the lock? Uh, I don't really do a lot of Necromancy. I do pretty much exclusively Evocation and uh, Enchantment. Enchantment for, like, mass holds and crowd control, and then Evocation for the big, big, big damages. I use this character for, like, R10s and that sort of thing. At least I would if I was at that level, but not yet. Spell focus, mastery, spell saves, glaciation, insightful con. That's a lot of good stats on one item. Especially if you don't have access to Kanath crafting. Ugh. More about it. I know, so I know where to start getting the event items. It's all in House Fjarlin. So if you go to House Fjarlin and you've seen the genie, and then also all the players that are crowded around the chapter house, which is like the big building in House P. Um, that's where you're supposed to go. So yeah, that's where you do all of it. Any advice? Yes. Get a group. Don't do it solo. Get a group of like four people and split up the labor and run the quests. With a group of four, you can get it done in about three minutes or less. And if it's three minutes or less, um, you're able to do... So you do all the turn-ins. So you turn in... Uh, so you get, uh, was it 12 party favors per run of the quest? So in an hour, you are burning... Uh, you're getting about 240 party favors. Basically, yeah. You split it up like that. Well, yeah, so that's why what I'll usually do if I know I'm going to be playing a game for an extended time, I'll get like I'll get like the three month or the six month sub for the deal and then I'll unsubscribe from it immediately afterwards. So that way it's just like I just run out the few months and then if I stopped playing, then it's there. And then if I, I'm logging in and I'm like, oh, crap, I don't have this bonus, then I just reset it. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. If you're wondering what's the best way solo, there is no best way solo. I apologize. It is much, 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 like, it's unbelievably faster to do it in a group. Like, more than three times as fast. Even one other person makes it so much faster. Jumping backwards over traps. Jumping backwards over traps. Jumping backwards over traps. Oh, 
Oh, apparently that, my spell did not go off. That's fun. I'll go right, because I can do it around. Best solo runs with five other people? Yeah, exactly. The best solo runs do it with five other people. Exactly. Just do it by yourself with a bunch of other people. Mm -hmm. Really? Go away, guests. Don't jump behind me, you jerks. They think they're so smart and so fast because they can jump behind the player. Well, I'll show them. Gotta find the archers. Are there not any spawning archers? Where are they? Damn yeah, good. Okay, we're good. Uh, do I have sprint boost? No. But I'd like sprint boost, so I'm gonna wait four seconds before I run through here. So what you do is you don't touch the water because the water summons stuff. There's two areas in this quest where if you touch the water, it summons things. I don't have enough move speed to get over here. If I had a dash, I could. Jump up, click this as we're falling down, and dimension door, and take it. See ya. I probably should have slayed Zangleen, but I don't know. That wouldn't be that much XP. That's only 500. Now I'm free. Also, if you don't like that red alert sound, you're going to hear that a lot today. Um, that is how you go fast. That's the sound of speed. That's the game going, whoa, too fast, man. Too fast. So fast, wow. George Wisdom Archer, my bow tooltip is so big it has to scroll. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Are your hardcore characters. Reminder, today is the last day to transfer off of hardcore. If you did not transfer your stuff off of the hardcore server, it is going to get deleted and you can't get it back. So, as a reminder, you have to transfer your stuff off of the hardcore league today. So if you didn't transfer stuff off of hardcore league, you are going to lose everything. Please transfer your goods and equipment and your services off of hardcore league or you're going to be really, 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 really mad. Skip the pit. Yeah. Echoes of dripping water reverberate through Speak with Tyne. Hey, what's up? It's time to go. Ho 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 ho. That's just leash should allow a chance of named items in optical chest to give incentive for people to hunt those down instead of just running to the end ASAP. Um I don't know. We've talked about this before, but a lot of optionals are like just cool in and of themselves. And do you have to reward people other than just like here's a cool experience every time? Hmm. I don't know. I'm not against them sweetening the deal on optionals, okay? I'm I'm in the camp of sweetening the deal on optionals. I'm just not A lot of people's suggestions is like give them more experience, which I'm definitely okay with. But if the optimal route becomes you have to do all the optionals to play the game, then the game gets a lot longer, if that makes sense. Because now every quest is going to feel longer than before. Um, which is not always ideal. I forgot there's no splitting up in this quest. I have altered the deal. Pray I do not alter it further. Wait, where's the chest? There it is. Yeah, I, I don't mind the uh, like uh, the idea of getting named loot in chess. I think better loot distribution is something that SSG needs to work on. Loot distribution in this game currently sucks. And it is they haven't changed their model for loot distribution in like seven years. And the cracks are have were showing, and now the system is just cracked. Grinding out gear is just not a fun way to get your equipment um, because ransack is not fun. I don't know a single person that enjoys getting ransacked. Um, in fact, a lot of people, it's like, 
one of their breaking points of taking breaks from the game is ransacking a, a chest and going, well, I can't play. And stopping. So, yeah. I would love it if they could find a way around that. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Shit, man. Yeah, so my move speed, I'm doing my best to get it as high as possible. Movement currently at 176, but ugh, needs more. Is there a buddy bonus happening right now? No, it's just straight up 25% XP. Yeah, so it's just a straight up 25% bonus XP going on. Do what Destiny does, limit the number of named items you can wear. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of how I'd redo DDO's loot system and get rid of the things I don't like. So problem number one, set bonuses. I think set bonuses are really cool. I like set bonuses. I dislike set bonuses because they're so narrow all the time where it's like you have to wear these specific items. And so if you don't like one of the items in the set, you just have like a dead item in your build. And having dead items just feels really weird because other video games don't have dead items. Right? Like, if you play, like, Elder Scrolls, you want all the stats in your gear. If you want Lord of the Rings, you want all the stats in your gear. You want, uh, wow, you want all the stats in your gear. Friggin', like, Dark Souls, you want all the stats on your gear. But in DDO, it's very possible to wear items that do nothing for your character except for the one stat that they give. Now, granted, other games will have this feature, like Diablo 3 is an example where you'll have items like this. But that's because those items are designed to do that one thing. It's like that's the only thing that they give you is the one effect. Like the jewel or something like that. But in DDO, you're supposed to wear every item on your character. Like, they have other stats. So it just feels weird. Like, as an easy example, a lot of characters that are running the um, Feywild Dreamer set don't actually want the gloves. Because the gloves are not very good. Would release Feywild set bonuses and augment. Yeah, I kind of wish set bonuses were just augments. That you augmented your gear or something. Or if there's a better way to do the loot distribution, it just kind of sucks. I'm a part of the family, but maybe I want a pair of gloves or something. Yep. The, uh, bargain? Turning your attention to the door itself, you notice this lock is surrounded by a pleasing jeweled pattern. Me neither. Everybody runs Flame Cleanse Fury. Flame Cleanse Fury is basically just such a good set. It's got every good stat that you want. I mean, maybe you don't want the light damage, but the healing is always good. Like, the thing is, if they also make it so that the set bonuses are interchangeable, it also makes the characters dramatically more powerful than they were before, because you can always get every set bonus you want. I have little to no wiggle room. We'll have non-stacking stats on multiple pieces. Yep. Yeah, at the end of the day, I think that there's a lot of things they could do to adjust and change the loot system in DDO. It's fine as it is. Like, I'm not complaining too much. Like, I'm not, I don't think the loot system in DDO is bad, okay? I don't. Um, it's unique. Other games don't do loot the same way as DDO. There are reasons for that. Um, but I don't think that DDO's loot system is bad. Um, because we also have a lot of flexibility and variety. And... You know, I'm not going to make the claim that like everybody's wearing the same thing because people aren't. There are a lot of different item sets you can use, especially since the update where we've got now all the new legendary sets. There are so many different item sets that people are wearing. It's insanity, dude. It's insanity. There's so many different gear sets. So to me, I think it's perfectly fine that people are wearing different stuff. Um, I think that the, the loot system is, is good as is. The distribution is really where I think the problem exists. Complaining about the set bonuses notwithstanding... The fact that the set bonuses are not flexible is made greater by the fact that the ransack system exists. So what I mean by that is that if you're playing and you ransack, if you want the part of the family set, 
if you ransack, let's just say, the gloves, you can't play the part of the family set, which means you have to wait a week. Right? So that's what sucks. There's no other substitute for that pair of gloves. There's only those pair of gloves. You have eight shots per week, and if you don't get it, wait a week to play the video game. That is the bad part. If they get rid of that, then it doesn't really matter that gear sets aren't really that flexible because you can just always go get whatever piece of gear you want. You can just keep playing and eventually get the gear that your character needs to be successful. Yeah, if you don't get the item that you need, you don't play the game for a calendar, for just a week. You go, I'm going to go play Lost Ark. I'm going to go play Elden Ring. I'm going to go play something else. And you might come back to DDO, or you might not. And people talked about before where it's like, yeah, but you can make it easier to get the gear if you have, like, alts and stuff. And it's like, the fact that you can make and level alternate characters to get rid of something that should just be a problem. Like, you're already spending the time. Right? No one's out here being like, I want to get the items for free. I want to get the items instantaneously. I mean, some people are probably going to say that. But I'm saying, if I want to put in the effort and I want to put in the work and I want to grind it out, let me just grind it out. Let me grind it out. It's the reason why I never post like end game versions of all my character builds. Because why would I write up a gear build if it's going to take me like years to actually put it together? What's the point? Quest Ransack has to exist, because if Quest Ransack um, in this quest? Oh. Does the Horde expansion loot for leveling purposes? Me too. They're having a blast? Yeah. You should keep playing, man. It's going to be a good time. That The Force Wizard build was very fun for me to play. I, I thought it wasn't going to be very fun, and it turned out to be great. So if you're having a good time, then keep rolling with it. It was, as I mentioned before, it was it was good. I, I had a, a great time. Oh, wait a minute. They actually patched um, Cyberpunk? Catch 1.5 update. Oh, I don't know. They actually updated this video game. Patch 1.5 is live for various rooms of the game, as well as a number of free DLCs. Patch 1.5. List of changes. So additional carpet uh, content. Apartments can be rented with a one-time fee when encountered. Oh, so you can get apartments? Can you decorate them? You can also rent all the apartments at the same time after playing through the game. They cost a billion dollars. You can now customize the apartment. Oh, look at that. You can now customize your apartment. Appearance customization. You can now tweak certain features of your character when using the mirror in any of your apartments. Oh, cool. You can change the way you look. Look at that. New apartments. Oh, great. So they added, like, apartments. I guess that's I guess that's their idea of free DLC. Is It's like, hey, check it out. Here's, like, a level of customization thing that people imagine you'd be able to do in the game. It's like, oh, can I get a haircut? Can I change the hair on my character? No, your character can't get a haircut in a modern video game. But it did, they did add it after a year, so that's cool. Hmm, Cyberpunk. They patched the bug that has a game with it? Uh, not yet. The, the, the game still has a bug. Make farming an endgame time-gated currency easier faster with alts? That's true. Every MMO has time-gating. That's just the way that they work. It just sucks. I just don't like time-gating. Time-gating's not fun. Anti-consumer. Let's keep you sitting on the end of the rope, just you know, waiting and waiting and waiting, and you're like, I just, I want to go, I want to do my thing, but you have to wait because the, you know, the, the, you can't just play right away. Time gated. So there's no reason for you to jump through that, right? We should just all work together. Demonstration purposes. Uh, does regular spell lower and type stack? No. Any th items with the same bonuses don't stack. It's 
So they do not stack, no. Burning through years of content to get to the end game? Yeah. If Ransack only lasted a day, it wouldn't be as bad, true. That's because that's like a natural break. Or like three days or something. But the fact that Ransack lasts seven days. It just blows. I mean, I guess the expectation is that you should take a long time to actually get out the, uh, get all the gear ready for your character, which I like kind of understand where they're like, yeah, we want it, our players to be able to play for a while and you shouldn't have all your stuff right away. Sure. But again, the reason why it doesn't work in DDO, in my opinion, is the fact that Dungeons and Dragons Online is a video game that requires set bonuses to work, right? So if I'm playing World of Warcraft, all right, and I don't get the trinket I want from the raid or wherever it is. It's not that my character doesn't work. I have like a replacement trinket and they only have four stats in that game. So if I'm playing as like a DPS, I need crit, mastery, haste, and versatility. I have four statistics I need to pay attention to. So if I'm playing as like, I don't know, um, a frost DK and frost DKs need more versatility than um, and I got an item that has more crit than versatility on it, then it's not perfect. But it's still usable. I can still play the game and do different content and do different things. But in DDO, if you want an item set and you don't get it, then you're like, well, now I got to either do the same amount of grinding for a totally different item set in the interim or just wait. Also, imagine you do the same amount of grinding because you're like, well, I didn't get the part of the family. So now I'm going to try to get something else. Uh, so you're like, well, I didn't get part of the family. So I guess I'm going to go with um, maybe some sans sets. And you can't get the sands gear either because you're missing one of the one of the items from one of the quests. Well, now what do you do? It just keeps layering. It gets worse the further you go into it. And so you think to yourself, well, if I ransack on this one, I ransack on another chest, and I ransack on another one, trying to build some item sets. Well, now I've spent like days grinding out items, and I've got nothing and nowhere. So what do you do? And I think the answer of getting either getting rid of Ransack or changing up how it works entirely is a better system. If they want people to take breaks, that's fine. But the idea of take a break for a week from your entire character or just reincarnate because you can't get the gear you want is really annoying and dumb. You change the amount of times you could loot the chest like five times but they change timer in three days to three days. Would you take that change? No. Never. That increases my odds that I don't make the gear, which makes it so I'm less like, even less likely to make an endgame character build. In fact, I probably would stop taking characters to the endgame entirely if that, they made that change. I would like almost entirely stop taking characters to the endgame. In fact, the entire endgame of DDO would probably stop being fun to me if they if they make it less than eight times. Anything less than what we have now means I'm pretty much quitting endgame DDO. And the reason why I say that is because, again, what's the what's the point of even trying to play? Five items per quest, five loots at 33% chance, which means I can run it five times and not even pull a named item. There's like a there's like a 20% chance that I don't even get a single named item. <laughs> right? <laughs> that would be insanity. No, absolutely not. Yep. Have a set time reset, not a rolling time. True. Yeah, they'll have a set time reset and they'll also tell you. You can't check your ransacks. There's no way that there's no UI that tells you that. The information is there, but the game won't tell you. Now had to do some stuff. Uh we're level ten uh level nine, holding level ten. Um, yeah, I can't do the traps. You want me to just run through? You do not get anything within five runs. Still, it's more than 10% of the time.
Red runes in the new sands, bartering, trend in directions, fix loot. Yeah, I hope so. I would like to see them fix some of that loot, those loot problems, but we'll see. See, the thing is, um, somebody who streams the game and also works at Sandstone Games is Cordovan. And he keeps talking about gearing out for his character. I wonder if when he's gearing out on his stream, which he's going to be doing at some point soon, if he'll his frustrations will breed changes in the DDO system. Yeah, 20% definitely was high, but still, or a high estimate. Here we go. You can reset every Wednesday at whatever hours. Yeah, a fixed reset time could be fine. I like games that have fixed resets. The benefit of a rolling reset is at least you know when you can take some type of break. Uh, but that means it's always seven days versus a fixed reset where it's not always seven days. The problem I have with a fixed reset is that you feel like you're losing something if you don't do something within the fixed reset. Like if I miss a week, I know I'm down one week on my on my you know reward structure or whatever it is. So like, oh, I'm down a week on ransack because I didn't do my ransack this week. Which means if I could have gotten the item, I didn't. That's that's also true, yeah. All right. Uh, fair, 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 fair. Fair assessment. Streamer luck. And people passing him stuff? Yeah, and he probably has an infinite amount of rerolls, too. That I just do not have. I mean, I guess I could. Bye. Don't attack me, you bastard. I'm busy. I don't, don't have time for your damage. I'm going to heal probably when I descend down this pit. Three, two, one. Here we go. We're good. One year streak. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Yo, welcome back to the stream team for one year. So I appreciate the support. Hope you're having a good time. How's it going? How's it hanging? How are you feeling to D? Surprised if he rerolls? Yeah. He doesn't. He. I mean, it depends. He, he does use cakes when he does his, his live stream and stuff. So. When dies on things. I mean, who wouldn't? I have my cakes down here. These are just already in my inventory. And a static TR resets on a static reset schedule. Oh my god, imagine you can only TR once a week. Oh, that would make some people real mad. To many of you, the TR, if they made it so you can only TR once a week, that wouldn't be that big of a deal. But to some, that would be a bigger one. I got it. Might get good enough to beat Margit in Elden Ring. Ooh, Margit's fun. My favorite part is that Margit, in my opinion, is very easy compared to the boss that is immediately after Margit. Not immediately after. It is a while before you get to the boss after Margit, but um, yeah, Margit was a lot easier than the boss that comes after Margit. Although for me personally, so far the hardest boss has been um, the boss after Margit. In my 40 hours. All the other bosses have paled in comparison. A lot of them have like simple tricks. Like the the dragons is just like be consistent. Just don't make don't make any mistakes. Their attacks are pretty slow and easy to predict. But they're just long. The fights are long because they have a lot of hit points. Swap around when he gets to camp. Yeah, maybe. He said he wants to improve the gear on his characters. So I'm just going off what he says. Although, to be fair, saying things and then doing other things is a very common thing. I do that all the time. So. 
But hey, I did upload my video. I just got distracted playing Elden Ring for the weekend. Go, oh, Dimension Door. Free me. Alright, uh, now what do we do? What? Ten then pit. Sounds good. I'd keep look like that random night dude was the hardest boss for you. That random night dude is really hard. Straight the hell up. Because immediately after, my favorite part is I killed the big dragon. I killed the giant plague dragon in the plague lands. And then I go into a building and there's that same night model and just laid me flat. It was embarrassing. <laughs> can't beat the dragon, can't beat that one night. It's too, it's too hard for me. My brain can't handle it. All right. So now I'm going to go up for the extra strong packed damage. So I do more damage baseline. Um, seems fine. And then next level, I get the extra packed damage. At the market, though. Map-wise. So basically, the open world segments are very, very different from the dungeon segments. Once you get to a dungeon, so Stormvale Castle is literally just a, a standard, dark, standard Dark Souls dungeon. One thing I will say that's nice about these areas is they let you explore literally everything. There's very, very few closed doors you can't go into. It's surprisingly more open than, like, um, Cyberpunk 2077 was.